Welcome to tonight's Citywide Sports Network College Football Telecast on KCWX TV in San Antonio and CW33 Dallas. You're watching a Conference USA rivalry game on CSN as the North Texas Mean Green hosts the UTSA Roadrunners at Apogee Stadium. And welcome to the Gun Automotive Group pregame show. It's presented by Gun Automotive Group, where buying your next vehicle is real simple. Alongside Chuck McAtenick, Mike Lefko with you. A heck of a matchup tonight for North Texas and for UTSA, Chuck. North Texas coming off a bye. What do they have to do to get ready for this one? Well, first of all, Mike, I mean, this is a huge game for both teams. North Texas is the only unbeaten team in the western side of Conference USA. And then UTSA, they've got designs on a conference title, too. They stubbed their toe in their opener last time out against Southern Miss. So an absolutely huge midseason game for both of these teams. Yeah, we know the stakes. We know the stakes are big. For North Texas, who's going to be the guy who leads their offense? Well, Mason Fine is their quarterback, and Fine being the operative word here. I mean, this kid's on pace to have a 3,000-yard season. He's had 11 touchdown passes already. Not the biggest guy on the planet, but super accurate with the football. And you can tell he's really starting to look the part now that he's a sophomore quarterback after seeing a lot of playing time as a freshman. And one of the key matchups tonight, I think, is going to be this UNT offense against UTSA's defensive front. They are absolutely stacked on their defensive line and in their linebackers, but in particular, this young man right here, Marcus Davenport. You see the career sack leader at UTSA. This guy, 6'7", super athletic, former basketball player. He will get after you, he will test you, he will be a force all game long. Well, the third member of our broadcast crew, Gary Streisky, caught up with head coach Seth Luttrell and asked him what the stakes mean in this one. Well, you can pretty much throw all that out the doors. Games like this and rival games, uh, you know, uh, emotions are going to be, uh, you know, high. And uh, the, I think the team that settles in quickest and makes sure they, uh, you know, just execute routine plays and takes care of the football uh, is the team that is going to have more success. When we come back, Chuck's keys to victory, the Gun Automotive keys to victory after this. North Texas 3 and 2, UTSA 3 and 1, and it's time for tonight's Guns Real Simple Keys to Victory, brought to you by Gun Automotive. Real simple. Chuck, tonight, what will UTSA need to do? Oh yeah, for UTSA, the first thing they've got to do is finish drives. Way too many field goals. Last time out against Southern Miss, 3 of them to be exact. Secondly, they want to limit explosive plays. They got burned on 3 huge home run balls. The last time out against Southern Miss, they want to tighten that up as well. And then lastly, D-line dominance. And then for North Texas, they want to start quickly. In their two losses, they felt like they haven't really put a whole game together. And so they want to see if they can get off to a good start tonight. And then secondly, win the turnover battle. That's key in almost every game. And then as mentioned, play all four quarters. They've done a really good job of doing that once conference play has started. And this team is hot. Well, North Texas is 2-0 in conference for the first time since 2004. UTSA trying to grab that first conference win. Kickoff comes up after this from Apogee Stadium. They're getting hyped up in Denton. Time for a look at tonight's game time conditions. They're brought to you by John Wayne Service Company. When you need heating, cooling, plumbing, or electrical help, make just one call to fix it all. Call 210-293-6700. Kick fielded at the two, and North Texas wrapped up immediately. They'll start just in front of their 10-yard line. Tonight's game time conditions, well, a little steamier. 91 degrees at kick, and just a bit of wind as the sun still kind of hangs high in the sky here in Denton. Well, Chuck, we talked a lot about Mason Fine, the sophomore quarterback, leads the conference in passing yards and passing touchdowns, and here he is leading his team out onto the field to begin the game. Yeah, playing in a system like this, you've got to be very accurate, and Mason Fine has been that all season long, and just a delight to coach. The coaches were telling us earlier this week, works his rear end off and plays with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because he is under six feet, but this guy's a gamer, and he can beat you with his feet as well. And there's another good one, Jeffrey Wilson, who dives forward across the 15. We'll talk about Wilson and the rest of this starting lineup for North Texas. Tonight's starting lineup's presented by IHOP. Eat up every moment for the Mean Green. Their starters, Rico Bussey Jr., a good one. But Jalen Guyton, their wide receiver, 14 receptions, 211 yards. And we've touched on Fine, who enters the game, 1442 yards passing and 11 passing touchdowns. That's first in the conference. Fine, airing it out long. That's Guyton, leaps and knocked away by Devron Davis. 
A good secondary by UTSA leads this defense. And for UTSA's starting lineup, also presented by IHOP, beat up every moment, Marcus Davenport. You touched on him, Chuck, in the open. Well, the, the sack man, he has the all-time sack record at UTSA, and he's such an imposing presence on that D-line. Yeah, just outstanding one-on-one -on -one coverage from Double D over here on the near sideline. They've really put these corners on an island to UTSA in their defense, and he was equal to the task there early on in this ball game. North Texas needs the 22. Fine to the corner, spinning out of a tackle and diving forward towards the marker. Jalen Darden comes up with the first down reception. Darden doing a really nice job. He was going to be short of the sticks, but puts a move on Nate Gaines, who over-pursued. Just able to slip past Josiah Tawaefa and lunge for the sticks and get UNT a fresh set here in the early going. Well, all of our first half replays are brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. When you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7 nights and weekends, 210-656-1000. Jeffrey Wilson dives forward for a few. So not only do you have Mason Fine, who leads the conference in passing, you have Jeffrey Wilson, who leads him in yards per game, 133.2 yards per game. What a balanced attack when you can hit him with the ground and hit him with the pass. Yeah, and I mean, on both of these teams, actually, they've got skilled players everywhere you look, and it's a reason why both of these teams have winning records early on in this season. Both offenses, extremely efficient, extremely productive. After the gain of four, Here's Fine airing it out again. Tight coverage knocked away by Austin Jupy. He was hanging all over Turner Smiley. Austin Jupy, the other side of that coin with Devron Davis doing a really nice job. UTSA also has top of the line defenders in terms of their DBs at both corners and safeties. Even their invert guys like Levine, super talented, super athletic. And those guys really holding up their end here in the early going. Now North Texas has already converted one third down this drive. They've converted 37% of their third downs this season. Guyton in motion. Fine's got time, tosses over to him. Jalen Guyton has space, and Jalen Guyton takes it across to the 45 yard line. Another first down for the Mean Green. Guyton's having a tremendous season, and Fine recognizing where he felt like he had the advantage to go. Matched up against the safety right here. This runs a little crossing route and gets it over the first line of defense. Completed pass. So far, the Mean Green two for two on third down. Now Jalen Guyton, immensely talented. Allen High School went to Notre Dame. Was only there a semester, though, and then transferred to Trinity Valley. And now here tearing it up for North Texas. Design run. Fine has space on the left side. Across midfield, where he's twisted up and brought down by Carl Lost in the third. Yeah, it gave UTSA the look like he was going to flip it out. Then just decided they go weak side and have a bunch of guys pulling. So UTSA is going to have to factor that into their bag of tricks trying to defend this North Texas offense. Now, North Texas is very good on the opening drive of games. So they played five games this year. They've scored on the opening drive of every game except their last one. They are pretty dangerous on opening drives of the game. And here's Guyton, an end around, and he's got space. And another first down run. Yeah, they're working on that left side here on these last two plays. And you're not surprised with North Texas's offense having its way against any defense, but they're not playing any defense. They're playing one of the top-ranked defenses in the entire country in UTSA, is giving up fewer than 270 yards per game. But... North Texas ain't no joke, averaging almost 40 points per. 0-0 zero, zero opening drive of the game, and our first half scoreboard is sponsored by John Wayne Service Company. Just one call to fix it all. AC, plumbing, electrical, and heating. Call 210-293-6700. And another long shot. Can't get pulled in, though, by Jalen Darden. Well, Josiah Tawaefa looked like he was going to come on a blitz, pulled back, and then did a little bit of a delay. And... I think what Mason Fine saw down there was he had nobody open and intentionally overshot his receiver. Just lived to fight another down. Now Graham Harrell talked a lot to us about Mason Fine's development into his sophomore season. And really, it's a young receiving class as well. A lot of these big performers, all sophomores, are relatively newcomers for the Mean Green. 
Pass tipped, and Nate Gaines had that one up in the air, and Carl Austin in the third was trying to eye that one for an interception. There's that ball hawking UTSA defense. Yeah, check out 93, who we featured on the open. He is coming right through the block and getting a shot on Mason Fine. He let that ball go quickly. He had to because of the pressure of 93. I mean, every single week you just see a gear from this guy that is quite uncommon at any level of college football. Third and 10, they need the 30-yard line. North Texas already converted two third downs already this drive. Here comes the house. Fine steps out of it. And there's a wide open Jalen Guyton. Wow, what pocket presence by Mason Fine. He's got a guy coming up the A-gap, unblocked, and, oh, he got a good chip there at the end, but kept his head, stepped up in the pocket, and delivered another rocket, and Guyton is getting his early. But that's what happens. If you don't get home and you're sending the house like that, it's tough for the guys on the back end to hold up that long. Yeah, UTSA sold out on the blitz and Fine stepped up and converted the 21-yard pass. Deep drop, short slant in and out of the hands, and incomplete of Michael Lawrence. Already you see what UTSA likes to do. They love to bring the pressure. As we said, their front seven, about as talented a group as you're going to see. And they do put their corners in a lot of one-on-one -on -one press situations. And UTSA has been pretty good, minus this third down. <laughs> but again, got to give North Texas credit. They're very talented all the way around on offense. And the D line for UTSA usually helps out those corners. Quick pitch. Here's Darden around the left side. Trying to step close to the first down marker. He'll be short, and it will be another big third down coming up. UTSA hasn't gotten off the field just yet. Well, Rico Bussey, one of the wide receivers, had a couple of guys over there doing a really nice job with the traffic situation and allowing that run to go for as far as it did. I mean, you were looking at, you know, long third down conversion attempt if that run doesn't produce anything. Instead, it's third and completely manageable, and you've got pretty much your whole playbook at your disposal when it's this kind of a down in distance. North Texas started at its own 12. They've converted two third downs. They've marched into the red zone. Fine, taking it himself. Good block out in front. Mason Fine charging forward, and he dives to the end zone. It's a touchdown. The Great Wall of China out there blocking in front of them. And just super patient, waiting for some of those blocks to develop, and then guys that are throwing blocks, stay on their blocks. Just an outstanding job right there by Jeffrey Wilson, getting out in front, lowering some wood for his boy, getting him in the house. And number six has got the early six as they take a look under the tent to make sure that that's exactly what it was. Yeah, how about Jeffrey Wilson kind of leading the way, almost tackled his own man forward. And if this stands, that's a 14-play, 88-yard drive capped off by Mason Fine churning in from 12 yards out. And what do you think? I mean, it, it's close, and it looked like he stumbled forward. But, you know, we know before, Chuck, who really knows with these reviews? We're not the experts, that's for sure. No, that's right. You can look at it a million different ways, and it all comes down to angles. And See, there's a, a knee getting close to down. The knee is down. You but don't know where the ball is. You might have a better look from this angle. But again, unless Ooh. the camera's right at the line, it's hard to tell whether he breaks the plane of the goal or not. So, we will see it. Look, either way, it was a heck of a first drive or might still be in progress, but UNT goes right down the field against a very good defense. Yeah. Hunter's knee was down with the ball at the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal, North Texas at the one-yard line. Clock will start and they're ready for play. Well, that negates... Uh, Mason Fine touchdown would have been his first rushing touchdown of the season. But not bad. First and goal at the one for North Texas. Yeah, and as we said, I mean, they've had really good success here on this opening drive. And, you know, that was one of their keys. They wanted to start off quickly in this football game. And we weren't really sure how they were going to respond to start this game. It's one thing to, you know, have a buy and all that. But sometimes... It's hard to get kick-started again, but so far for UNT, not so much. Although, Bobbled snap. Yeah. And look at UTSA just submerge Mason Fine. 
Well, obviously, when you can't find the ears on the snap, it's going to blow off the rhythm of the play. And UTSA taking full advantage there, so they catch a break on first down. Brian was lucky that ball came right back to him. They actually fall back a yard, back to the two-yard line. To bring in some more personnel. And you know, they had packed it in. Now they're going to spread it wide a little bit. Yeah, I always like these formations down by the goal line because it's exactly what it does. I mean, it spreads the defense out. You can run or throw out of this formation. Fine, hands it up to Wilson. He is stood up and driven back by Marcus Davenport and C.J. Levine. You got the initial surge for UTSA. Yeah, C.J. Levine really doing a nice job plugging holes right there. Just shoots through the gap. Look at that. Got a free shot and did not whiff. Squared him up, and now all of a sudden, UTSA kind of arching its back a little bit here and see if they can get a stop on third down. It would be a huge turn of events, especially after it looked like Mason Fine had scored. Yeah, this has been the best down for North Texas. Three for three on third down conversions. Fine has space, and Fine has the end zone. A two-yard touchdown run for Mason Fine, and North Texas takes the lead on the opening drive of the game. Well, Fine was delayed, but not denied. Saving his best for that third down play, and North Texas showing early on that when they get guys out and they're pulling, running outside, they've had some success. So we'll see if UTSA can make some adjustments here going forward, but North Texas out to the early lead. It was quite the march. Started back on the 12-yard line. 88 yards and the two-yard run by Fine capped it off after 17 plays. Extra point up and good, and just like that, seven to nothing, North Texas. So a mix of offense, but it was all Mason Fine, the conference's leading passer, runs it in, and the Mean Green leads seven to nothing. Conference USA's best offense marched right down the field, 88 yards on the opening drive of the game. And Chuck, not only did they march right down the field, they also ate up a lot of time to kind of take away and minimize UTSA's opportunities. Well, what's interesting about that first drive is, you know, Mason Fine's completing over 60% of his passes. He's only four of nine on that drive, but when you're perfect on third down, it really doesn't matter. Great opening start for UNT. Kick fielded by Winnegan right at the goal line. He's a speedster, had the longest touchdown this season for UTSA. Knocked out of bounds, and that's where the Roadrunners will take over. Uh, UTSA and another potent offense will have it. First drive for Frank Wilson's offense when we return. Mean Green lead by seven. Lead seven to nothing. UTSA, UTSA's offense on the field for the first time tonight. And Seth Luttrell, second season as the North Texas head coach. He has turned this team around. And all first half scoring summaries are presented by the San Antonio Auto and Truck Show happening November 9th through the 12th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. 88 yards in 17 plays, and Mason Fine capped off the scoring with the two-yard run. Sturm under center to start this one for UTSA's offense. And off to Rhodes, gets upended right at the 20-yard line. Take a look at the UTSA offense presented by IHOP. IHOP beat up every moment. Dalton Sturm coming off a career high, 367 yards and three touchdowns last week against Southern Miss. And Jalen Rhodes, who just had that carry, was bottled up last week, but he's rushed for 366 yards this season to lead the Roadrunners' rushing attack. And off to Rhodes again, and now he has some space. Jalen Rhodes out in open field, and he's run out of bounds at midfield by Eric Jenkins. Yeah, a flag on the play. Last week against Southern Miss, they were junking up the box badly to try to stop Jalen Rhodes, and they were pretty effective doing it. And Jalen coming out here with a nice early run. Looks like it might be for naught, though, with the hanky on the ground. Or perhaps not. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense. Number 53. 
15 yard penalty, repeat first down. Now that's Jordan Wright, who has been pressed into duty because some of the injuries along the UTSA offensive line. And they really have been stink bitten this year. Chuck, they lost one of their starting O-linemen in the first series against Baylor. They lost another one. Reed Dara got hurt on the first play uh, against Southern Miss. So this has been a, a banged up, almost patchwork offensive line at times. Yeah, and even as banged up as they were last week, I really felt like those guys did their part holding up. And UTSA's offense got better as the game went along. But, you know, penalties was something that killed UTSA all the way up until last week. They cannot have any of those today. Tyrell Clay in the backfield. Pass goes out and in and out of the hands of Greg Campbell, Jr. That was a big hit by Kimon Hall. Let's take a look at the North Texas defensive lineup. And again, tonight's starting lineups are presented by IHOP. Eat up every moment. The man who really leads them, Kashawn McLean, 2016 second team all-conference selection, has an interception and a couple of pass breakups this year. And he's a senior at a Rosenberg, Texas. Big test now for UTSA. North Texas is able to convert three third downs. Here's the first down of the first third down of the game for the Roadrunners. Sturm has time, throws and knocked away at the last moment. Josh Stewart was covered by one of their best corners, Eric Jenkins. Yeah, Jenkins stride for stride with one of UTSA's best receivers, Josh Stewart. See the offensive line doing a great job holding up and giving Dalton a clean window to throw to, but throw just a little bit towards Josh's back shoulder, which allowed the DB to get his hand in and knock the ball away. Yanni roots this back to punt for UTSA. He's averaging about 37 yards per punt this year. And Jalen Darden's back for North Texas. Sidewinding kick. And a good bounce for UTSA. Also, Trickling all the way down inside the 20. Is that a live ball? Well, UTSA is going to run that one in. It was touched by a North Texas player. I think the official had already whistled it dead. And yeah, and you couldn't advance the punch anyway then. on something like that either. But it was interesting to see how close North Texas was to that football. And North Texas up seven. They'll have it again when we return. The Mean Green back on offense on their first drive, went 88 yards down the field. And Mason Fine had nearly every piece of yardage, 49 yards passing, 21 yards rushing, and the two-yard touchdown run. Wilson probing, dives forward. He's wrapped up by Kevin Strong. And right now, let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team. Gary Streisky joins us on the sideline. Mike Chuck, much appreciated, guys. You touched earlier about how Graham Harrell and Mason Fine kind of both had those growing pains, both in their first seasons at UNT. Last year, Graham telling us this week that he would pretty much look at every play as if he was still slinging the rock back at Texas Tech, like, oh, man, that was a misread. I could have made that read. I could have made that throw. So, of course, they had to battle through all of that stuff together, no matter whatever happened in those meetings and however they had that dialogue. It's clearly working because Mason Fine putting up quite a sophomore campaign, guys. And putting up another one right there all the way to Jalen Guyton for the score. Oh, right on cue, talking about Mason Fine, and he airs it out once again. And there's Jalen Guyton, who had 211 yards last week, and another big touchdown grab. And all of a sudden, it's 13 to nothing, Mean Green. Yeah, he had two catches already in this game on the first drive for 36 yards. And then North Texas going way up top, and Guyton with a lightning strike. Fine right on the button again, and North Texas out early, shell shocking the Roadrunners. A 77 yard pitch and catch. Jalen Guyton had a touchdown last week. That's his longest reception of the season. And for Mason Fine, that's also his longest pass of the year, topping a 72 yarder. Well, here's some trouble with the snap going all the way back to Trevor Moore, and he chucks it up, and a valiant attempt, no good. It will stay 13 to nothing. But North Texas has struck. They're two for two, two drives, two touchdowns, and the Mean Green have stormed out to a 13-0 lead here at Apogee Stadium. Now Mason Fine has lived up to expectations so far. 
entered the game leading the conference in passing touchdowns and yards per game at nearly 300. Now, so far today, 126 yards passing and that long passing touchdown. Two plays, 82 yards. That's the San Antonio Auto and Truck Show scoring summary. 77-yard touchdown reception by Jalen Guyton, his sixth of the season. Winnigan at the goal line. He has some space up the middle and a block to spring him. At the 35, Winnigan's got some speed, and there goes Winnigan down the sideline, but he's ruled out just across midfield. Tried to escape the diving kicker, and Brett Winnigan claps over in disbelief, but what speed to break that one. I'm going to tell you, the kicker, he did his part. He got just enough of Winnigan to make him, oh, what a crushing block before that, but check this out. Trevor Moore. Oof. Just got enough of him to force his angle left and just did clip the sideline, it looked like. Otherwise, that would get UTSA right back in this football game in an eyelash. And, of course, this school's never had a kick return for a touchdown. That would have been the first. Right at 100 yards, too. He filled it right at the goal line. And there's a reason why Brett Winnigan has the longest play this year for UTSA. Just broke one loose against Texas State, 71-yard touchdown. And sets him up in midfield. Hand off to Rhodes, he probes forward. And then he's knocked close to the first down marker, just shy of the 40, though. Now, the first quarter of tonight's CSN football telecast is brought to you by North Star Dodge. Open Sunday, it's your savings destination. You know, Mike, we're early in this football game, but this already feels like a big drive, doesn't it, for UTSA? I mean, North Texas has come out and delivered a couple of haymakers to start this football game, and the offense has got to pick up the defense right here. Fake the handoff, fake the pitch. Sturm throws to a wide open Tyrell Clay, and he is loose into the end zone. How about that wrinkle from UTSA? Mercy, all kinds of window dressing up at the top here. And North Texas doesn't know where UTSA is going to go, and somebody obviously busted and left Clay wide open, but they did a couple of misdirection things in the backfield. North Texas is all tied up. Terrell Clay on the wheel, and UTSA answers one play later. And Tyrell Clay's first receiving touchdown of the season, and it comes on a quick hitter, two plays, 49 yards. Capped off by that 41-yard reception. Yeah, you thought something might have been up when they had both running backs in. Clay and Rose were staggered there in the backfield. And as you said, some window dressing, and they slipped him out. And North Texas was certainly caught off guard. You know, I kind of thought this was going to happen today when we were talking about these two teams. and how many explosive players they have on offense. I mean, this had all the makings of a shootout because, yeah, we could talk about how great UTSA's defense has been, and they have been for the most part, but when you're facing a team as talented as North Texas is and a team that's averaging almost 40 points per game, you knew they were going to have their hands full. And, you know, of course, there's still plenty of time for them to settle in and try to figure out what they're going to do to try to stop Guyton in particular, but that was an almost... You know, one of those situations where UTSA almost had to score in order to stay in this football game and kind of at least show North Texas they're going to be here. Yeah, after the three and out, yeah, to yeah. start the game. And almost prophetic words, too, from defensive coordinator for North Texas, Troy Reffitt. Get to that in a second after this kickoff. Deep one, though, and Guyton just watched it go, or Darden rather watched it go out. But Troy Reffitt, their defensive coordinator, he told us, you know, they need to be more disciplined in pass coverage. And I think this was pretty telling, Chuck. He says, there are too many guys looking at the quarterback, and the quarterback will lie to you every time. It looks like that's what happened right there after a couple of fakes by Dalton Sturm. And that's kind of what UTSA's defense is having to face in this football game as well. I mean, we talked to Coach Wilson this week, and he said he counted up 10 explosive plays against his team in the Southern Miss game. So you know he's not too thrilled with how this game has started, especially with that touchdown pass of over 70 yards for North Texas on their second drive. Here's our scoring summary. It was a quick one, 54 seconds set up by the Winnegan kickoff return, and then the big hitter to Tyrell Clay for 41 yards. Fine hands off to Wilson, and he's got space around the left side before being wrapped up by Tau Effa. 
gain of four on the rush. Yeah, and Wilson's off to a good start, too, in terms of yards per carry. So UTSA's got a lot on its plate today, and they knew that coming in, obviously, with what North Texas has showed everybody on tape to start this season. Very impressive offense. They're averaging nearly 39 points per game. That also leads the conference. Wilson again takes it up the middle, going to drive the pile forward. And he's stood up by a host of defenders, King Newton and Marcus Davenport. Got in on the tackle. And UTSA already making some changes on defense. Andrew Martell's now in at safety, so you know, you could kind of see some things working here in the early going. I think North Texas thought that they saw some things on tape that they could take some punches on or take some shots on defensively and schematically, and now UTSA is trying to counter punch to try to cover up some of these holes that North Texas has found early. Another third down for the Mean Green. Toss over the middle to Guyton, and he dives forward for the first. Wrapped up by Javontavius Mosley, but the third down conversions continue for North Texas. And they just can't get off the field in a yeah. good way. Yeah, and that's key in every game. I mean, if you're good on third down, you're probably going to be good on the scoreboard as well. And sometimes it's just bad luck. I mean, C.J. Levine fell down, but well, Guyton got a little chip right there and ended up getting the ball. So good for him. Nice, smart veteran move. How about this? Six for six on third down conversions tonight for North Texas. Fine's got all day. And they throw it long down the right side. It's hauled in for the catch at the 35-yard line. Boy, we talked about Mason Fine and his ability to be accurate with the football. He dropped an absolute dime on this particular pass. Defender's not even turned around, and the running back, all he's got to do is put his hands out. That's Nick Smith, Yeah, and that's the redshirt freshman coming out of the backfield. That's room service is what that is. Jeffrey Wilson back in. North Texas once again across midfield. Fine getting pressured, and Marcus Davenport rips him down for a sack. And it looks like Fine a little slow to get up, and his helmet comes off, so he has to come out for a play after the third sack of the season by Marcus Davenport. Well, Marcus Davenport just getting singled up here on the right side of your screen, just speed rushes his guy, and... I feel for anybody that's got to try to block this guy one-on-one. -on -one. He's an absolute beast, and you're seeing it on display here again this afternoon. Nine-yard loss. Second and 19. Hand off to Wilson. Breaking free and has space down the left side. Wilson in a foot race, and he's wrapped up and tackled out of bounds by Carl Austin to save a touchdown. But Jeffrey Wilson had eyes on his 10th rushing touchdown of the season, breaking loose. So many times when you see this, play called when it's a blitz and it's a draw or delay you can get a big hit like that and North Texas did just that that right play at the right time and UTSA fortunate that, that wasn't another touchdown 35 yard rush for Jeffrey Wilson North Texas trying to keep piling on the points they've scored touchdowns in their first two drives of the game Nick Smith plows forward and Tawa Effa was in there to lead the charge along with Kevin Strong Jr. So UTSA rolling the bones early to try to stop some of these explosive plays and they get the sack on the previous play and they rolled the bones again, sent the house and just could not find enough guys to plug holes and North Texas knocking on the door again. Third straight drive, very impressive on offense so far to start this football game to say the least. And they are coming off a of bye week. So they've had a couple of days extra to maybe scheme and draw some things up against this UTSA defense. Fine to the end zone. Knocked away. There's good coverage by C.J. Levine and Tawa Effa. We go to that slant, and that's been one of the plays that they've had a hard time connecting on here on the early going. But little else. Mason Fine has been really good, especially throwing the ball down the field. Again, he's one of those guys, he's not going to wow you, he wasn't over-recruited because he's under six feet, but I'm telling you, we saw this guy last year, he looked like he was growing up before our very eyes. Now you get the guy a year under his belt, he's even, even more impressive. Fine, taking off. 
in trouble and knocked away at the last moment. A little hesitation there by Mason Fine, and Marcus Davenport was bearing down quickly to force the first fourth down of the game for the Mean Green. Yeah, and Marcus Davenport can't say enough about the hustle of that young man on that particular play. I mean, he came all the way across from the other side of the field. As you see, he's getting doubled and able to beat the double. Make fine, get rid of it, and throw it incomplete. So at least UTSA is able to stop this to a, and hold it to a field goal attempt. Quinn Shanbor's the holder. There's an issue on the snap on the extra points. That's why it's only 13. Trevor Moore, one of the best kickers in the conference. And he puts this one up, and it's right through. North Texas, three drives and three scores. They extend the lead once again, 16 to seven right now. But I think for UTSA, you know, a big minor win there, and you can build on that going forward to get North Texas off the field and hold to a field goal. You know, the one thing you'd have to say about UTSA is, is they're making fine work for everything that he's gotten for the most part. I mean, you know, we talked about this guy and his ability to complete passes and, you know, to clip at like 62 or 63 percent. That's pretty darn good. And you know, right now he's only completing half of his passes, but again, you just can't say enough for what these guys are able to do and how they're able to keep the sticks moving with how great they've been on third down. And Guyton is already off to a huge day. I mean, well over 100 yards receiving already on just four catches, but if you take a look at our mattress furniture for less, score more for less. If the runners score more than 30 points, everybody's going to receive a 15% discount Sunday and Monday at all three San Antonio locations of mattress and furniture for less. But yeah, quite the hot start for North Texas. And I mean, I don't think we're too surprised considering their resume to this point in the season, but UTSA is gonna have to find a way to stiffen up here a little bit. Well, that took an interesting bounce and was whistled dead as it hit the end zone. So back to the 20-yard line for UTSA, 25-yard line. And you know what? UTSA's offense was pretty productive on its last drive. Yeah, and I mean, I think they would have been too on that first drive, but, you know, you get some penalties, and it's tough to move the sticks at any level when you're fighting down in distance every time because of a, a penalty here or a penalty there. They got to clean some stuff up, obviously, and the way North Texas is moving the football, you're going to have to be pretty perfect on offense to stay in this football game. And there's another big march by the Mean Green going nearly 70 yards, 10 plays, 69 yards, capped off by the 23-yard field goal. Sturm gives an end around to Greg Campbell, Jr., and he's ripped out of bounds on the North Texas sideline. Yeah, and Greg Campbell's one of those guys, I think, that caught us all by surprise this year. He kind of... Plugged in some holes last year, but he's really emerged as one of Dalton Sturm's favorite targets this year. And they're getting a chance to talk to Coach Wilson this week. He really felt like Greg was one of those young men that, you know, maybe wasn't real thrilled about the coaching change when it happened. And so he wasn't putting all his effort into what needed to be done, but he's gotten with the program, and they really like the results. Sturm airing it out. There he goes right back to him on cue. Greg Campbell, Jr. He had a career high last game, 10 receptions, 108 yards. And it really helped out because Kerry Thomas, Jr. kind of limped off early in that game against Southern Miss, and he tried to come back and then wasn't really in the game in the second half. But Greg Campbell, Jr. charging. Well, we're through one, 16 to seven. Mean Green, second quarter action after this. UTSA has the ball to start the second quarter. Starting to move it. Trying to get across midfield. Maybe it's just that end zone going towards the open end zone here at Apogee Stadium. Our North Texas scored three times in the first quarter. Two touchdowns on their first two drives and then a field goal. And how about these offenses? Chuck, we kind of knew it would be a lot of offense. North Texas averaging 11 yards per play. UTSA averaging nearly nine yards per play. That's insane halfway through the year. There's Rhodes stepping forward and then tied up and he'll be thrown back by the linebacking core of North Texas. Well, we were talking a little bit about the wide receivers. Let's go down to the sideline. Gary Streisky has more on these UTSA wide receivers. Yeah, Mike, everybody knows you haven't made it unless you finally get a moniker or a nickname, the UTSA receiving group. They have both of it. How does this sound? Afros, 
America's <laughs> finest receivers on Saturday. Last week they backed it up, had a handful of guys over the century mark in yardage. They're trying to do that again tonight, guys. Yeah, I love a good nickname. I, I wish I could think of something good like that. I do too. What I like was Brady Jones saying, hey, can I get in that group too? And they said, yeah, man, it's all inclusive. These receivers have been solid for UTSA. Helped Dalton Sturm to 367 yards passing last week. There's a helmet getting twisted off at the last moment. Jalen Rhodes may have to come out, but the flag is out on the field as well, and that may have something to do with that run. Although Rhodes is trying to work his way through the defense and off to the sidelines. Yeah, I'll tell you, it is getting mighty chippy down there between UTSA's offensive line and UNT's defense. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 50. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. And that would be why his helmet came off. All I know is I'm always watching 68 for UTSA, Austin Pratt, and he got some nasty on the play previous. UNT's going to get some nasty right back. Well, that's Ladarius Hamilton. And if you want to talk about good nicknames, he's nicknamed Hambone. I like that one. I don't know, man. That dude's got some pipes. And then you see 68. That guy plays with a motor and a fierceness that is absolutely contagious for this UTSA football team. Now the Roadrunners now into North Texas territory. Couple of fakes again. Sturm under pressure and flings it away. Almost intercepted, though, by Kyrie Muhammad as Sturm tried to find some time. And now he's up and limping a little bit. Now that was the same look that they gave or a similar look on the touchdown. And this time, North Texas having none of it. They had a lot of guys in the backfield, and Dalton doing a really nice job just getting that ball away because all of his receivers were covered up nicely by the UNT DBs. Tyrell Clay still stays in at running back. He was the guy that snuck out of the backfield and had the big touchdown for 41 yards for the Roadrunners score. Here they come. Sturm to the outside. Brady Jones dives forward, and he's hit hard on the far sideline. And Marquez McNair doing a nice job getting out there and throwing a nice little block for him. But really interesting as always, you know, Dalton, that pressure was coming from his left side right in his face. Just threw right into the blitz, which is what you got to do a lot of times. You can pick up a big play. Kimon Hall on the tackle after a gain of five. Now this Mohammed is something special, number four, I'm telling you for North Texas, big time player. UTSA, 47% this year on third downs. One of the better marks in the country, but 0 for 1 tonight. Sturm steps up, tries to escape, and he's spun down and won't get the first. Tried to step forward and find the open area down the left, but tackled right at the line of scrimmage by Brandon Garner, the redshirt junior linebacker. Yeah, the young man from Mansfield doing a really nice job. For those viewers that don't get a chance to see UTSA very often, Dalton Sturm, as good an athlete as you can have at quarterback, is usually great making people miss, but 37 having none of it and forcing UTSA into a field goal attempt. Now Jared Sackett is a walk-on. He's a freshman from Fort Worth, and he's also 7-for-7 seven seven this year on field goals. There's a big boot into this one, and it is up, and it's good. Well, that continues to be a nice weapon for UTSA. Sackett had a career long of 44 against Southern Miss, and he knocks that one through to make it a 16 to 10 game. UTSA charging back here in the second. Mean Green lead by six. Early in the second, offenses showing out as we kind of figured in this game between the two best offenses in the conference. And UTSA strikes first in the second quarter. Eight plays, 50 yards. Jarrett Sackett, 42-yard field goal. What a nice addition to UTSA's special teams. And both these coaches really stressed, you know, all three phases of the game. They don't feel like their team has put together a full game in all three aspects yet, all four quarters. So that's something I'm sure they'll be focusing on as this one progresses. Now the second quarter of CSN football is presented by the San Antonio Express News, bringing you the real facts since 1865. Yeah, we've had a good one with some fireworks here early on. Well, literal fireworks, too. Yeah. North Texas shoots them off. Boy, they really do a nice job here putting on a show. Apogee Stadium, this is my first trip here. Nice place to watch a football game. Beautiful. Built in 2011, 
Got that distinctive wing in the left end zone. That's where North Texas is moving towards. And it's a nice track up here. Mason Fine certainly seems to like it. Here's the handoff to Wilson. He charges down where he's wrapped up by Mikael Bass. And Balin Baker. UTSA committing more guys to the run right there on first down. It's going to be one of those pick your poison, but you've got to do something. You've got to either stop the run or stop the pass, but you've got to do something because it has been a track meet for North Texas to start this football game. Three for three scoring on their three drives. You just wonder if that extra point is going to come back at some point and haunt them. Yeah, six-point lead certainly feels a lot different than seven. It's fine. Charges it over to Lawrence, and he's able to rip it down right at the first down marker. A really nice job that time. Lawrence getting his hands up and snagging that one out of midair. And after running his route as quickly as he did, that's not often easy to do, but especially when you know you're usually going to take a lick. But he found the soft spot, made a really nice play finishing off that pass play. Yeah, Graham Harrell, their offensive coordinator, said his nickname is the standard because of his precise routes. And that Michael Lawrence is one of these young receivers who's really learned to assert himself and become more confident in his abilities this year. Here's a pitch on the end around. And there is Jalen Guyton once again, taken out to his own sideline. Another first down scamper. Yeah, no worse for wear on the sideline as he takes out a few guys. They all pop up. All excited, and here they are in the jet sweep and getting some guys out there in front, blocking for him. And, and this young man's got speed to burn. We're seeing that on display here early in this football game, and you can understand why they seek him out so frequently on offense. It's an 18 yard reception. So Guyton's now up to 134 yards receiving, and we've only played about 20 minutes. And give him another nine on the ground, and there's another home run ball. Darden just over his outstretched leaping arms, but fine. Went long once again. Boy, they are really finding some matchups to their liking here early in this football game. And they're getting some guys that they feel like are just flat faster than some of the UTSA guys. And you talk about, you know, really for most programs, the most, ex the, the most unsuccessful plays are the home run plays. But I'll tell you what, they were just an eyelash away from hitting another one. And Darden's only a freshman at Eisenhower High School in Houston. Oh, this is going to be a quarter watch. There's some trouble. For Mason Fine, and he wisely dives on it. Then he's tapped down by Kevin Strong Jr. But we've seen now two missed snaps by North Texas, and that one's going to cost them the first third down conversion that really pushes them back. And now it's going to make it very, very difficult here. You know, they have converted all but one third down. Yeah. This is going to be a challenge. They have to get to the 36-yard line of UTSA territory. Oh, it's just one of those things, too. You know, you're rolling, your offense is doing everything right, and then, yeah, you have one miscue like that. It's a huge rally killer, or at least on paper it is. We'll see. Here comes pressure. Quick toss over the middle, and a dive forward attempt by Lawrence, but he has stood up, and every white jersey made sure that Michael Lawrence wasn't getting any further. Yeah, they brought Tau F on a twist that time to try to make him get the ball out quickly and then had the second line of defense right there to make the stop. So UTSA at least is able to get off the field for the first time on defense. But, you know, nothing else for UNT. You're hoping you can pin him back and make him have to go the, uh, the, the entire length of the field to score if they want to. And here's Alvin Kenworthy for the first time tonight. Boots one high and short. Brady Jones is there. Makes a fair catch. and. Uh, UTSA pushed back a little bit, but that defense comes up with his first stop of the game, and there's the first punt for North Texas. Now UTSA has scored on their last two drives. We'll see what the Roadrunners do when they have the ball next. After an opening three and out, UTSA has been able to march down the field and make this a little nerve-wracking for North Texas. Now these two teams have a very young series. That's the Roadrunners who own the all-time advantage. They lead this series 3-1. to one. Their only loss was here two years ago to a then winless North Texas team. That mean green team would finish 1-11 on the season. Pitch to Clay, charging and stood up, and then driven back 
by Lyacia Tauarello. Well, right now, let's check down on the sidelines once again with Gary Streisky. Guys, I thought it was telling earlier in the week when we had our conference call with head coach Seth Latrell, and we asked him, you know, what does this game mean? Is it the biggest game? And we've all heard the general coach talk, the copy-paste, hey, it's the next one up, that's the most important. But we had a pretty tellingly candid moment with coach Seth Latrell saying, yeah, this actually is the most important game. It's probably the toughest competition we've seen thus far, and that will probably see the rest of this regular season. Pretty telling. Clearly, they're playing like it tonight. Yeah, Gary, I thought what was interesting, too, is that last week, head coach Frank Wilson from UTSA said Southern Miss was going to be the best team that they had faced at that point, and that includes Baylor, and North Texas beat Southern Miss like a drum. So these are two teams that really respect each other and are both on the way up. Sturm had to run back to his own goal line, chucks it out to someone just trying to get a prayer in. You know what? He does. The flag comes flying. Dalton Sturm got knocked down all the way back in his own end zone, and he chucked that one up to any white jersey. Pass interference. Defense, number 27. The ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, I thought was interesting there, as much duress as Dalton Sturm was under on this play, pretty good pass. Squares his shoulders, and as you can see, the defender's there a little too soon. Yeah, that was right on line, though. And you're right, running away from the, the pressure and takes the, the big hit at the end by Joshua Wheeler. Sturm has time, throws the far sideline. Brady Jones leaps and pulls it down for the first down. Wrapped up on the play by Kimon Hall. Yeah, I really like what UTSA is doing there. Frank Selfo mixing it up. North Texas on the first play to start this drive just did a jailbreak with trying to stop the run, and they really snuffed it out because, you know, Jalen Rhodes had had a pretty good afternoon to this point, averaging seven-plus yards per carry. So this time on first down, he decides he's going to throw, and UTSA is moving the sticks again. Hand off to Clay, stutter steps, driving forward, and still charging the pile. Well, coming up at halftime, Gary Streisky will host, and a little bit more on Gary as he joins our broadcast tonight. One of the co-hosts of the Morning Dose on CW33 Dallas, and Gary's background includes being an anchor reporter in Houston and with Nesson. He was also once the sideline reporter for the Boston Red Sox. You can watch the Morning Dose on CW33 Dallas from 5 to 8 a.m. Welcome aboard, Gary. Certainly not something Chuck or I could do. 5 to 8 a.m.? <laughs> oh, or work at Ness and do the Red Sox either. Kyra Clay pushes forward and gets close to midfield. Guys, just a little bit less sweating, a little less hitting uh, during morning dose compared to what we're seeing on the field tonight. Otherwise, pretty much just uh, the same thing. <laughs> I still don't know how he wakes up that early, but kudos to you. Honestly, Gary. neither do I. <laughs> Hey, as long as those paychecks don't bounce, bro. Or how he's still awake then. He's waking up at, what, 3? Getting there at 5 in the morning? No, people actually think that he shows up five minutes before he does his thing. <laughs> Let's not ruin the myth. Sturm hit hard by Hamilton. Chucks it up to Stewart, who comes down with the catch. Josh Stewart just going up and high-pointing that football. We saw that last week against Southern Miss, and look at the leaping ability of the 6'4 senior. You know, teams make adjustments in season, in games, and sometimes in plays. Dalton Sturm recognized that Josh Stewart was wide open on a home run ball, just couldn't get it out quite quick enough, and then Josh on the back end of this picked up the ball and like a good center fielder came charging back towards it and... Wow, what a great play on the back end. Actually, all the way around, Dalton getting rid of the ball as well. And off to Rhodes, spinning, but nothing there. Kimon Hall again coming up from his cornerback position. You need plays like that, you know? Don't go exactly like you design it or like you draw it up, but good impro improvisational skills by both quarterback and receiver on that one. And, you know, Josh Stewart's been such a big part of this offense for two years running now. You know, a play like that will get the whole team spot. Had a huge game last week. Five receptions, 101 yards, and a touchdown against Southern Miss. Nothing there in the pile. 
driving back on the short carry. Like Darius Hamilton got in there along with a couple of other mean green. And that's the one thing like we saw last week against Southern Miss. Southern Miss did a great job taking away UTSA's ability to run the football. But UTSA stepped it up, chucking and ducking it down the field, and a lot of different guys stepping up in order to get UTSA just a two-point conversion from sending that thing to overtime. Well, the Roadrunners are 0 for 2 on third down conversions, and this stadium's getting loud. Sturm, design run to the first down marker and more, and Dalton Sturm charges forward into the red zone. Player making a play right there. Dalton Sturm, the former walk-on, is tough as nails. It's been a little bit different for UTSA running this offense this year. Not a lot of run design plays for him because they want to keep him upright. He's clearly, you know, one of the more talented quarterbacks that Conference USA has, and so they don't want to get the guy hurt. And he's done such a great job this year recognizing when to run and when to throw. But eyes are always downfield. Coaches talked about and marveled at how he got in and really hammered the books this year. And, you know, his study and his knowledge of what's going on here has really increased from last year to this. Clay charges forward. Got an ankle tackle. And he gets close to the five-yard line. And Clay was really nice last week, too. You know, as tough a sledding it was for UTSA running the football a week ago, Clay came in and gave him some pop and had a couple of really nice runs to loosen up Southern Miss just a smidge in that football game. Well, that's something that, again, Troy Reffitt, the Mean Green defensive coordinator, said UTSA is unflinching in what they want to do. They want to line up, run the football, and they will commit to that. And that was, that's what makes them kind of dangerous at times because they will just hammer it and hammer it home. There's Clay again. He has nowhere to go because Sean McClain, we talked about him early on in the broadcast, one of their best safeties, came charging forward for the stop. Yeah, Keyshawn McClain, just by experience and productivity, is one of this team's leaders. He's paid his dues. Tremendous worker, big playmaker as you watch him shoot the gap. Led the team in tackles last year. Not getting quite the action that he saw last year because teams are scheming to go away from him. But the young man has a nose for a football, and you can only scheme so long. I mean, he's going to make some plays and, and beat you at some point. Just a terrific player. Loss of one on the play, and now another third down. UTSA needs the two. Sturm has to escape to the right side. Charging forward, big hit, and Sturm lost the football. Scary, scary play right there. Dalton Sturm took a shot. The ball in his helmet came off. And there's a scrum at the goal line. And it's a touchdown. Now let's see if Dalton gets up. He got his bell rung. So I, my apologies, his helmet stayed on. Looked like his head kind of flung back, but he took a big shot. And the ball came loose. Oh, mercy. It's helmet to helmet action. And it didn't look like it was any intentional. Just guys playing football, but I don't know. Hard to measure intent. But Dalton just manning up, sniffing the goal line, trying to get his team the lead. And boy, does he take a nasty shot. That's D. Balkman. Yeah, his head twisted around. And the helmet did actually come loose, didn't come all the way off. And that ball went right into the end zone. And that's what you always fear. As you mentioned with Dalton Sturm, he's such a good runner. But he is irreplaceable to this UTSA offense. And to see your quarterback take a, a big shot like that, you got to be hold your breath inducing. Oh, man. That is hard to watch. But previous to the touchdown, kudos to the way UTSA was managing the clock. Did you notice they were snapping the ball with one second left? Looked like he got in there. But I don't know if they're checking this out to see if it was targeting or it, this game, Mike, we talk about this every week, and yeah, it does look like he might have fumbled it too. But here, here's the issue, is that the referees then came up and signaled touchdown. So, so I'm not was, sure what you overturn, right. because even if it's a fumble, they still motioned that UTSA got the ball. So they'd have to keep looking right. and see if there was a clear recovery by North Texas. 
Well, it's hard to say. They might be looking at a bunch of different things. But, you know, going back to what I was going to say about, you know, we see it week in and week out. This game is getting harder and harder to officiate because, you know, we're all concerned and rightfully so about player safety. And, you know, but it's still a contact sport. Guys are still trying to get other guys to the ground. And when you're talking about the size and the athletic ability and the speed of all of these players, I mean, even offensive linemen can run now. And just, you know, the inertia that's created, play to play, snap to snap, it's it's unbelievable. And, you know, you see a quarterback take a shot like that, but, you know, guys are rushing full speed to go to the football. And then, you know, Dalton's being contorted here by 49, so he's on his way down. And even if you don't mean to hit the guy's head, yep. you got two guys running into each other. Yeah, D. Balkman's going for the chest or to knock that ball loose. And then, yeah, his Sturm's head gets brought down. And then it unfortunately head-to-head. -head. You said it. Players are bigger, faster, and stronger from how this game was probably initially designed way back in its infancy. Makes it hard to referee as well. So uh, something like that, too, where... There's so much contention around what's a targeting call, you know, is that an intentional hit? Not necessarily that play, but is a defenseless receiver defenseless? All these things, and it's so fast down there on the field. Indeed. Look, this is going to be a complicated review, though, because there's a lot to check. First, you got to see if he crossed the plane. That's Sturm. Then the ball did come loose, so do you rule that D. Balkman had a clean recovery? And if he did, where is the ball placed for North Texas? Did he get out? Is he at the one-yard line? Or is he at the goal line? Because this is big. Looks like he picks it up. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. And I'm sure Frank's talking things over with the official about, you know, possibly checking for targeting. But again, I just don't know how... I don't know how these officials do it week in and week out. And, you know, again, measuring intent. When is the guy trying to do it? When is he not trying to do it? It's tough, man. Jared Sackett puts the point after through. And just like that, UTSA is in the lead. The Roadrunners trailed 13 to nothing. They have Storm back, scoring on their last three drives. And it's 17 to 16, UTSA in the waning minutes of the second. Dalton Sturm took a couple of big shots on that last drive, but his seven-yard run to the end zone, and then a Stephon Beard fumble recovery in the end zone has UTSA on top 17-16 to here with just two minutes left in the second. Well, we certainly hope Dalton Sturm is okay because UTSA really would have a tough, tough road uphill if that young man's going to miss any of this game. And, you know, he was down on the sideline talking to his teammates and moving his jaw around but you can understand it man you gotta check to see all your teeth make sure they're there you take a shot like that Jalen Darden downs it North Texas will have the ball on its own 25 yard line we'll see what Mason Fine can conjure up Mean Green trail by one North Texas came flying out of the gates jumping out to a 13 to nothing lead now it's the road roadrunner fans who've had something to celebrate 17 to 16, UTSA on top. Fine, gonna lob it downfield. And a leaping catch out of bounds. Back to Rico Bussey will set it back to second and 10. Well, coming up at halftime, Gary Streisky will bring us the Six Flags Fright Fest halftime show. It's Halloween, and no one celebrates it like Six Flags Fiesta Texas and Six Flags Over Texas during Fright Fest. If you want some Texas-sized scares, check out SixFlags.com for all the details. After those long drives, North Texas has had only a field goal and then had a punt. How about that? How many times do you see teams go into a prevent defense and a two-minute warning and... Uh-uh. North Texas is seeing the best of UTSA. They're in press coverage. They're getting guys in the backfield, and guess who's back there once again? I think Don Harris called it last week when he said he's just unblockable. 93 is unblockable. You better be sending two guys and then have another chipper out there. I mean, this guy... He's putting together some kind of reel for the next level, boys. I'm telling you. 
6 7, 255. I don't know how you block that. Look at these guys. Looked like there was movement on the line. No call. Instead, it's going to be another sack at the fired up UTSA defense. 93 again, and we got a flag at the end of the scrum. I'm going to tell you what. Pete Golding is not holding back UTSA's defensive coordinator. Man, that is that is being aggressive. And Mason Fine is hurt. We talked about the irreplaceability of Dalton Stern. Mason Fine was slow to get up, and now he is limping. Yeah, obviously he's another guy that, you know, North Texas just can ill afford to lose. I mean, you're talking about statistically the best quarterback in the conference right now. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense, number 71. Penalized happens to the goal. Result of the play brings up fourth down. Timeout, UTSA, their first and a half. It will be 30 seconds. That's Jordan Murray, the left tackle. There's gotta be some frustration on that North Texas offensive line right now. Marcus Davenport. Just setting up an apartment down there in the backfield. Well, this has been a tale of two quarters. I mean, North Texas comes out and just smacked ETSA in the face twice on their opening two drives with touchdowns. Then got a field goal on their third, and then, you know, UTSA kind of chipped away, and then they've scored on three straight drives, and that missed extra point, the difference so far, but you know, UTSA is going down there working on their clock on the last score. And instead of just playing defense and trying to keep everything in front of you, they play defense downhill. And I don't know if North Texas was ready for that, quite frankly. Pete Golding's bunch dialed it up, brought some pressures. And now look at this, add the penalty and they're gonna have great field position, maybe get some more points before the half. Fourth and 31. A rugby boot, going to take a good bounce, but Brady Jones scoops it up at the 45. There he is upended by Kashawn McLean. Now let's take a look at some scores around the conference. Tonight's Conference USA scoreboard is brought to you by MySA.com. There's that Southern Miss team that both these teams played in their last two games. Out top on UTEP. And how about Marshall? They've stormed to the top of Conference USA's East Division. And they stay there with a 35-3 win over Old Dominion. Yeah, we saw Old Dominion last year against UTSA, and they had a lot of talented kids on that team, and a couple of them are now in the NFL. But they lost a lot during, you know, between seasons. FIU also at the top of the division. They will stay up towards that mark. They're leading Tulane. That's a non-conference game, but FIU and FAU have been some surprise teams in the East Division this year. Sturm going to try to lead the offense again. Tosses one out over the middle, spinning down forward into North Texas territory. And here's the hurry-up offense with 45 seconds left in counting, or 49 seconds left in counting for North Texas. And good to see Sturm back in the ball game. The shot to the head, he just shook it off. Glad he checked out all right. I'm sure everybody else is at home as well. Empty backfield for Sturm. Going long, right down the middle, and just over the hands of the tailback, Jalen Rhodes. That's going to be a tough mismatch for a linebacker to pick up that running back. Now let's take a look at the Conference USA standings. They're presented by MySA.com. Take a look at them in just a second after this replay. Look at that Rhodes almost had it right around linebacker Brandon Garner. But UTSA has pushed it again into North Texas territory. Sturm having to escape and just tosses it to no one. Darius Hamilton on the charge. All right, let's take a look at the Conference USA standings. They're presented by MySA.com, the largest voice in South Texas for 150 years. And this is what we mentioned, Chuck, so much at stake right now. North Texas 2-0 trying to lock down the conference and the division, and UTSA trying to get that first conference win. Yeah, and I get right back into the race, and essentially if they can win today, it's going to help everybody else in this conference stay in the race. So this is a huge game for a lot of reasons yeah, for both of these Southern teams. Miss would really like if sure. UTSA could win. They lost to North Texas two weeks ago. Sturm's got time, throws to the marker, and it's hauled in 
Going to be close. Looks like a little short, though, by Brady Jones. He was knocked back immediately. Now UTSA's front, those guys up front doing a really good job. North Texas running a bunch of stunts and twists, trying to get home. They couldn't. But North Texas is able to at least force a fourth down call right here for Frank Wilson. Are they going to go for it, or are they going to punt it away? Now UTSA called a timeout to talk it over. This is interesting. You're up by one. You've been very dominant in this second quarter. Do you try to put the hammer down now with a manageable fourth and two? But there's an inverse, of course. If you turn it over, North Texas has some momentum, and you know how quick they can move the ball down the field. Absolutely, but, you know, this is, this is what you like about the way both of these coaches coach. I mean, you never know what you're going to get because they both like to put it on their team. They're confident in what they have, and I wonder if Frank's going to really roll the bones or punt this away, but it's going to be interesting no matter what. Hand off to Clay. He has the first, and he dives across the 30-yard line. Now they got to hurry back to the line of scrimmage. Nice run by Clay. Clock has started, and Sturm spikes it. Now stopped with 15 seconds left. Just one timeout remaining for UTSA. But you are in field goal range, potentially, for Jared Sackett, who's long as 44 this season. Well, that's the one good thing about having that one timeout left. You can use the entire field. And it's going to be interesting to see how they play this because if North Texas is just worried about the sticks here, UTSA may take a shot into the end zone because they're already in field goal range. Stir moves the pocket. Under pressure and throws back over his body where it's knocked away by Eric Jenkins. Big time play by Eric Jenkins right there. Singled up with the receiver, doing a great job getting leverage and sticking his hand in. This textbook can't defend it any better, plain and simple. Well, another third down, but you might only have time for one play regardless with only 10 seconds left in the half. That should be enough to. Run any kind of play you want here. Yeah, one play and then call the timeout. And try to get the field goal unit on. Sturm slant to Campbell. Knocked in and out once again by Jenkins. It will be a long field goal for Jared Sackett, who is 8 for 8 this year. But his long's 44. And he did knock through a 42-yarder earlier in the game tonight. And it will be 47 yards. It would be the longest of Sackett's career. Pushed it off to the left. No good. And that will end the first half. Boy, that was a strong one. Yeah. Great game so far. Both these teams playing their hearts out. And, you know, one team steals all the, the momentum early, and then the other team gets it right back. UTSA had a chance there to make that steal a possession there with that three points, but hey man, the kid can't make them all, can he? It's all right. It's still a 17 to 16 lead. UTSA was down 13 to nothing. They storm back. They have the lead at halftime. And right now, let's go down to the field. Gary Streisky standing by. Coach, obviously the offense started slow, but you were able to climb out of that two-score deficit. How do you sustain that momentum your offense has built? I think we had to continue to do the things that we were doing. Uh, they jumped on us initially and picked up every first down in the first drive, went down and scored. Uh, we answered uh, We answered it, came back and scored, and scored yet again, and then finally uh, we settled down defensively. Uh, I like the things we're doing offensively. We're moving the ball uh, the way we need to. We'll need to continue to protect the quarterback and continue to block up front, and I think we'll have a chance here. Coach Marcus Davenport, an absolute problem right now for UNT. Is he the defensive factor right now for you guys? I think as a whole we're playing well. I think the defense is really uh, pursuing to the football and giving them problems. So we'd like to continue to do that this second half. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck in the second thank half. You. Mike Chuck, back to you. All right, thanks, Gary. Coming up next, the Six Flags Fright Fest halftime show. If you want some texas size scares, check out SixFlags.com for all the details. UTSA leads 17 to 16 in a critical West Division matchup. Our halftime coverage gets started after this. 
It's the start of the third quarter here from Apogee Stadium. And after a very strong start to the first quarter for North Texas, it's been all UTSA. And the Roadrunners have the ball to begin this third quarter. Chuck, how important of a drive is this for both teams right now in a one-point game? Well, you know, they always say the most important drive of each game is the one that starts the second half. So, you know, I think it's big for both. But we'll see. I mean, this game, wow, Winnegan almost busted that one. But this game, you just get the feeling it seems like if whoever has the ball last might be in the best shape in this one. Well, Gary Stricey caught up with Seth Luttrell right before halftime ended. Uh, Gary, what did he tell you? Guys, basically the focus was on Marcus Davenport. He's obviously creating absolute havoc for the UNT offense, head coach Seth Luttrell saying they're not going to deviate from their necessary game plan and offensive calling. However, they might actually put somebody else into maybe Chip Davenport or some other running back coming out of the backfield just to give their quarterback that extra split second before Davenport can get into the backfield. And he's been such a force. Six tackles, two and a half sacks for Marcus Davenport in the first half. Toss out to Campbell Jr. following his blocking, and Greg Campbell Jr. gets knocked forward for a first down, but a flag flies behind the play. After that skirmish to try to knock the ball loose, EJ Ageo is trying to knock it free at the last moment. My man Austin Pratt down there, too. <laughs> Illegal block in the back. Number 34, offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Yeah, that was close to being a lateral, too. That's junior fullback Halen Stewart. Campbell Jr. doing a really nice job cutting that thing back inside, but clearly a block in the back there as he motored downfield. Well, Kashawn McLean kind of got twisted around because of that nice stutter by Campbell Jr., and then, yeah, Stewart just came charging right into him. Negates the good gain and pushes UTSA back to its own 22-yard line. They need the 40, but it stays first down. And off to Rhodes, and he has just stood up, but he falls forward. He's having a nice ball game, too. Kind of sneaky about it. You know, last week, Southern Miss was so concerned about stopping him. And I mean, you could tell that he was absolutely their defensive game plan for the entire week. And so they made his life awful miserable a week ago. But you know, this is a guy week in and week out. The coaches just rave about, you know, not only his development as a football player, but as a person and as a leader, too. He leads that whole group, and he's one of the offensive leaders for sure. Yeah, third on the program's all-time rushing list, 1,435 yards entering tonight. And tonight, Rhodes has 38 yards rushing. Sturman Trummel airmails it over the head of his intended receiver, Shaq Williams. And we talked about the D-line for UTSA. Well, North Texas is getting a little pressure on Dalton Sturm. He's had a scramble a few times tonight. Yeah, and on that time, they junked it up a little bit on their defensive front. You'll see they run a little twist right here, which forces Dalton to his right. And then they had a guy right there ready to make a play. So they had that well defensed. And Joshua Wheeler and... ISC Tower Alo are in there. Another third down for UTSA. They're two for six tonight. Sturm, quick toss off to Rhodes, trying to stagger, stagger free, and he has nothing. There is Tower Alo. Nicknamed Tawala Bear. Well, Tawala Bear, good nicknames. you know, and he did a really good job staying at home on the play previous and UTSA thought they'd be able to hit him with a quick screen here and North Texas absolutely sniffed this one out all the way. Jalen Darden back for North Texas. And here's Yanni Rutsis who actually had a couple of shank punts last week against Southern Miss. He's been solid this year and this is a good looking punt right now. Pushing back Darden, he'll let this one go. And a huge hop before it's finally down inside the 20-yard line. A nice flip of the field there by UTSA. And it gives North Texas a little bit of a challenge to start with. Well, tonight's third quarter of CSN football is presented by Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, the steak dinner done right. Good eatings there, and we got some good eatings here, man. I mean, what a ball game we've had game. so Exciting. far. Exciting. Man. And that was a huge stop for UNT to start this second half. Obviously, the penalty 
as they so often do. I mean, they're just drive killers. They're just too hard to overcome. And when you've got to start first down and 20, man, that's awful tough to overcome. Jeffrey Wilson has been bottled up all night, and that continues. You know, Saya Tawafa led the charge uh, along with King Newton. For this North Texas offense, they had three 80-plus yard drives to start the game. In the second quarter, they only had two drives, and both resulted in punts. You have to credit Pete Golding there in the UTSA defense. Whatever adjustment they've made, it's been significant. Well, you got to keep playing, and that's what Coach Wilson talked about, which he thought was really a plus last week. The draw to Wilson probing patiently, but still nothing there as UTSA wraps him up after a short game. Yeah, UTSA's defense has really made some nice adjustments. I mean, this looked like for a while they were going to get run right off the field, you know, after those first three drives, but they've really tightened it up. They're bringing some more pressure, getting some guys in the backfield way active up on the front, as you would always expect them to do, but really have tightened things up on the back end as well. And that's not easy to do when you got a guy like Jalen Guyton who's already gotten his tonight. Yeah, Jalen Guyton has had a huge game, 134 yards receiving and a touchdown. Third and long, fine scrambling, trying to escape pressure. Lofts it deep downfield. It is picked by Nate Gaines. The second interception of the season for Gaines, and it's the first turnover forced by UTSA tonight. Just a great adjustment on the football by Nate Gaines. And... It just goes to show you how hard it is to make a throw across your body, especially a deep ball. The receiver was down the field. He'd gotten separation from Gaines, but fine trying to load up. It's just so hard to throw a deep ball across your body and Gaines making a great adjustment for the football. Leaps up and that's his second pick of the year. And that's what UTSA talked about putting them in obvious passing situations with that D-line, creating the pressure. That's why they like to play a lot of man-to-man -man because you have the D-line that's that explosive. A short field for the Roadrunners. Jalen Rhodes had nothing going. Attack for a loss by E.J. Agia. Agia doing a really nice job around the line of scrimmage, getting down there and making a play for his squad. Going back to the previous play on the interception, you know, Guyton was running free over here on the right side, but when you get so much pressure and you force the quarterback to go to his left like that, he wasn't even looking at that side of the field. Nor could he. Second drive of the half for UTSA. Had a punt it away to open the third quarter. Here's a short pass to Marquez McNair. He had two touchdowns last week. And McNair dances towards the 45-yard line. We'll bring up another third down for the Roadrunners. That's what we like about Coach Wilson, too, and I think his players do, too. He says he, he writes his depth chart in sand. So if you play and you're going to help him win a football game, you're going to get on the field. And Marquez McNair getting some playing time in the second half of last week's game, and, boy, he really helped rally the runners and had a chance to tie that game up late. Sturm's got time, steps up. There's Campbell Jr., wide open space down the center of the field and down across the 25-yard line on a defensive breakdown by the Mean Green. Well, there he is again, Greg Campbell Jr. And again, just to finish his story from the first half, Coach Wilson said he was late buying in, but, you know, he had a better attitude this year, had a workmanlike mentality. Did the same thing in the winter and the spring and the fall camps and progressed, and they're just really excited about what he's been able to bring to this table. I mean, they knew he could play, and, you know, he's just really grown up as a football player and a man as well. There's Jalen Rhodes again trying to find space on the right side. This, this is such a deep receiving core. That's a testament to the fact that we hadn't even really talked about Greg Campbell Jr. until last week because you have a Josh Stewart and Kerry Thomas Jr., Marquez McNair, a Shaq Williams. He had the big game against Southern. Now, there are just a lot of weapons at Dalton Sturm's disposal. And that's what Coach Wilson talks about. We don't care how many stars you have next to your name when you get here or what you did in the past. What are you doing now? What are you doing at practice each day? And off again to Rhodes, trying to find space. And he is met after a short game. A little everything going on this drive as UTSA's offense trying to reestablish some rhythm. 
You saw early on it was a little bit of a struggle with the first punt, but then it was a touchdown, field goal, touchdown, and another field goal. And, you know, a quick out to this third quarter after the penalty, but here they are in their second possession and picking up right where they left off in that second quarter. And contrast that with North Texas, their last three drives, punt, punt, and then that interception. Nothing there for Sturm, and just flings it out of harm's way. Oh, my goodness. Kerry Thomas Jr. just got mugged running down the field, and there was no call. Dalton Sturm was unhappy at the end of that play. His jersey got twisted. He was pushed down what he thinks was late and came up looking for an explanation from the referee on the far side. But it brings out another field goal attempt for Jared Sackett. I saw Reed Guerra there walking off, too. It's good to see him back after he got nicked early on in that game last week. Snap a bit high. It's down, though, by Bayless. And the kick is good from Sackett. Now UTSA extends the lead. The interception turns into points. And again, after it was 13 to nothing, it's now 20 to 16 UTSA. The Roadrunners trying to grab their first conference win. They're up by four on the mean green. Out to a four-point lead. Fell behind immediately. I keep talking about that, but it's so funny how drastically this game has shifted. North Texas just marched down the field on the first two drives, and since then, this UTSA defense has kind of clamped down, and they have really kept this potent offense, the conference's best offense, from getting anything done, just a field goal after those first two drives, and no points for North Texas well, we'll see if, since the first quarter. Yeah, we'll see if North Texas... Tries to reestablish Jalen Guyton. I mean, he's got five catches for 134 and a touchdown, and all that came in the first quarter, but nothing since. Down by Darden, and North Texas will have it at the 25. Well, as we take a look at that last scoring summary, second half scoring summaries tonight are sponsored by North Star Dodge. Open Sunday, it's your savings destination. Looks like there's a flag, actually. Hang on. We'll take a look at that flag first. Offside. Kicking team, number 23. That five-yard penalty will be added to the touchback spot. First down. All right. A little over-eager there uh, on the kickoff. Well, for UTSA, though, just got that last interception. And you talked about a oh, re-kick. All right. Well, they make everyone walk all the way out there. Hey, it's so much fun to watch. Let's do it again. <laughs> you know, you had completely taken the special teams off, and now they have to run all the way back out there and do it again. Well, we'll see what UTSA has been really good covering kicks this year. So if they don't get it into the end zone, see what happens. North Texas could use a nice return, that's for sure. I mean, as tough as the sledding has gone, really, like, midway second quarter on, they could use a big play to try to turn the tide here a bit. Yeah, well, Darden and Johnson now standing at the goal line. And there's Darden feeling a step in front of the goal line. Stepped out of a tackle nicely, but then was knocked out of bounds, and C.J. Levine had his momentum carry him all the way into the North Texas bench. I don't think there was any ill will there. C.J. Levine and Dane and Cavill they made the tackle on that one. Now look at North Texas. We kind of touched on it. They were so hot to start. And then a punt and a punt in the first half and that interception to start off the second half, the first turnover of the game for either team. And UTSA back out there. And we'll see what this conference's best defense can do. This was... Build is the matchup of the best offense versus the best defense coming into this one. Wilson plows forward across the 30-yard line. Oh, some good numbers by both of these quarterbacks. And it was Mason Fine who really came out on fire. Who had 70 yards on that first touchdown drive where they went 82. He has slowed down a little bit, but still 10 for 19, 197. And then Dalton Sturm. 112 yards passing, and we saw him take a, a tough shot. He can always tuck it and run, so it just adds that versatility with his legs as well. 
Find to the near sideline that was looking for Guyton. And it got tipped at the line. And then a flag comes flying all the way from the secondary. At the end of that play, there was some pushing between wide receivers and cornerbacks. About what you'd expect. A couple of conference throws going tete There's no foul on the play. The pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Third down. Oh, we could have told them that. We saw it up here. Speak, they made the adjustment, though. Speak for yourself, bro. <laughs> Another third down coming up for North Texas. That was Balin Baker. He got the hand on that one. We talked about how deep UTSA is a wide receiver. It's the same on this defensive line. I mean, they lost Solomon Wise in camp. He was going to be one of their staples up front, and they just have not missed a beat. Next man up mentality. North Texas 0 for its last four on third down. Ball is loose, picked up by Fine, and he takes it himself on a busted play. But Marcus Davenport, who initially knocked that free, tried to hustle him down, and Fine again is hurt. And it looks like Marcus Davenport is hurt as well. He's limping and he's up, but Fine took another shot. And he has come up grimacing twice tonight. Well, he's not the biggest guy on the planet, but I'll tell you what. He's gritty, he's got a lot of guile, and man, is he tough. I mean, this is a bust. Davenport's running free. I how don't does know no how one block him? <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. And then find somehow able to elude the tackle and then turn that into a positive play. Unbelievable. A great hustle effort by both Fine and Davenport. And Brady Jones spins around but pulls it in. And UTSA will have it at the 32-yard line. So the defense tightening up again for the Roadrunners. UTSA a 20-16 lead. And the offense comes back out onto the field after this. UTSA has controlled possession throughout the second quarter, now into the third. And Looks like a good chunk of orange and blue fans made the trip up here. UTSA has been good on the road this season, 2-0 on the road, including that big win against Baylor to start the season. Tyrell Clay spinning out of a tackle and pushing forward. Look at that second effort by Clay to get towards the 45-yard line, another first down run. Really just adds a nice change of pace there to Jalen Rhodes, the, the two potent head headed running back attack there, Chuck. Yeah, there's no question about it. And it seems like every time Clay touches the football, something good happens. I mean, he tacks the line and then was able to slide down the line a little bit and then push forward. Really good showing of the functional speed there. And yeah, he's really been something else. I mean, really catching our eye really week in and week out with this team. 20 to 16 UTSA. Tonight's second half scoreboard sponsored by Home Vesters. Need to sell your home quickly, call Home Besters. As Dalton Sturm is wrapped up and has nowhere to go. Big tackle for loss by Joshua Wheeler. That's his third sack of the season. Yeah, Josh Wheeler getting back there, and he had some help. UTSA trying to run a little play action, and Josh Stewart was actually downfield with some inside leverage, but there was just no time for Dalton to turn and wheel and throw. He was able to turn and wheel, but that was about it. Josh Wheeler from Grand Prairie making a nice play there. But again, there was pressure coming from a lot of different angles on that one. A long second down here for Sturm. Looked like he had faked out the North Texas defense, but Kashawn McLean able to recognize and tackle him after the short game. A big third and long coming up. Yeah, really good job over there on that left side. Guys staying at home. You know, you look like you're going to run it to the left, and then Dalton decides to keep it. I'll tell you what, he's got to learn to get down a little quicker. He's already taken a couple of wicked shots in this ball game. UTSA needs to keep this young man upright. Well, all second half replays are presented by Thomas J. Henry. When you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7, nights and weekends, 210-656-1000. UTSA needs the 48 of North Texas. Sturm fires over the middle, and it's hauled in for the catch by Josh Stewart. Can he wow. make some tremendous plays or what? Yeah, and how about the throw by Dalton Sturm? He's got a guy coming free. North Texas bringing some heat. And all Dalton does is stand in there and take it like a big boy. Watch this. Zip throw gets smashed, and then on the back end, unbelievable hands. And he took a big hit, too. By Josh Stewart, and then... Tell you what, man, that's a man sized quarterback right there. But ruled just a yard short, and the offense is still on the field. 
Stern giving him the hard count, and now he'll call timeout. Well, UTSA did convert a fourth down earlier in the game, but they fire off a timeout. It looks like a small victory there for North Texas. They're fired up going towards the sideline. So as UTSA hits its first time out of the half, we'll see what the Roadrunners do out of the break. They're hanging on to a four-point lead here in the third. A pair of second-year head coaches, Frank Wilson and Seth Luttrell, and they've done some remarkable things with their first year and now second season. Uh, look at North Texas kind of scuffling. We talk about how they dominated. Chuck, four drives now, only 13 yards off of those last four possessions. Uh, conventional wisdom says you punt it. UTSA, they don't want any part of that, and they pick up the first down. Tyrell Clay still going. Power football across the 40 and inside the 40-yard line. Needed one, got almost 10. You know, that's just extreme faith, obviously, and the guys that you got out on the football field there. I mean, the way your defense is playing, I mean, we just showed the graphic. You've held them to 13 yards in their last few drives and, you know, pin them down, see if you can get another stop, and then go get your score. But Frank Wilson and company deciding, you know what, we're going to come out here. We feel like things are going our way. And, you know, again, we've talked about the makeshift offensive line with next man up, and they lose a couple guys. And, you know, to have that much confidence in that group up front, man, that says a lot. Hand off to Rhodes, and he powers forward. He's hit at the 36-yard line by Colton McDonald. A senior out of Hazlitt, Texas. Spent three years at West Texas A&M. I mean, you really send a message to the other side that you can't stop us. I mean, again, you get that ball, and let's say, you know, runner stumbles, you, there's something that happens, you don't pick up the sticks. I mean, all of a sudden, North Texas has got the ball on your side of the field, but I guess they feel like, hey, the way our defense is playing, we don't care where we're going to set them up. So, bully for them. It sure is fun to watch. Sturm's got time. Throws to the flat, and underneath the diving attempt of Kerry Thomas, Jr. But look at the time of possession, too. I think that's another point. You're just wearing down a defense. And before that last play, a bunch of the mean green had kind of their hands on hips. Thinking, all right, how do we get a stop here? Right, and you know, UTSA now up over 25 carries in this football game and 120 yards rushing, and it is, it's like body blows. You keep running it and running it, getting those guys up front that are delivering these blows. You know, you can run the ball in the second half with the lead. I think you're gonna like the outcome more times than not. Another big third down. Sturm steps up and fires over the head of his intended receiver. It looked like Greg Campbell Jr., but there was some miscommunication. And Dalton Sturm again took a big hit. And I'll tell you what, he is bruised and tattooed in this one. North Texas again, just smashing guys left and right. Joshua Wheeler might have thrown something extra behind that one. And the offense stays on the field with fourth, and a long eight. Well, and Josh Dunlop dropped early. Yeah, it looked like there was a lot of confusion between Snapper and the rest of the offensive line. Offense, number 64, five yard penalty, fourth down. They were thinking, now you got a punt, right? <laughs> well, they haven't really gone to conventional wisdom so far, at least what you thought earlier. But, well, punt team coming on, and I'd say yes. A couple of punts already today for Yanni Routsis, Routsis. And no one is back for North Texas, so they don't think this might be up to snuff here. Rootsis holds for a while, but he does boot it away. And I guess you don't need anyone back when it goes right into the end zone. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's a big plus for UNT there. I mean, they'll take that every time. Well, North Texas at halftime had a very special ceremony. They honored legendary head coach and college football Hall of Famer Hayden Fry 
He coached here from 1973 to 1978. A 40-game winner for the Mean Green. And before he went on to Iowa, that's where he made his mark here at North Texas. One of the best coaches of all time at both North Texas and Iowa. And a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, tremendous coach. And it brings me back to my youth watching those Iowa teams that he had as well, watching them on TV seemingly every week because he had good squads there too. But, you know, obviously a winner every step of the level and speaks to the guy getting to a College Hall of Fame, obviously. Mason Fine again running for his life and has to chuck it three rows over his bench to get out of pressure. And look at some of the people who have played here. You notice that number 75 chucked down there on the, underneath the scoreboard, Apogee Stadium. You look down there, you recognize that name? Me, Joe, Joe? Joe Green? Yeah. Well, they've had some players who have come through here. You remember him as a player and remember the wildly famous Coke commercial that he did with a kid where he threw the kid the jersey. It was epic advertisement so back in the day. There was some question about how North Texas got the nickname. People thought it was because of Mean Joe Green. It's kind of been synonymous with both of them. You know, Mean Joe Green played here. He was Mean Joe Green, and North Texas has adopted it, had, has adopted it and really gone to that as their primary nickname over the past few years. They're kind of one and the same here. Yep, the old stalwart on the steel curtain defenses of the 70s. You know, obviously a team that dominated the decade there in Pittsburgh. Well, North Texas needs a first down desperately. Fine moves the pocket, throws to the flat, and it's caught by Michael Lawrence. Diving into his bench, and he moves the sticks. That's a huge conversion there. Our North Texas team that had been scuffling on offense. Well, you called it. I mean, UTSA has done such a good job getting pressure. North Texas decided they were going to move the pocket and give their quarterback a chance to make a play by extending it. And just a really good job throwing accurately on the run. And couldn't have happened at a better time for North Texas as things have not gone their way here the last three or four drives. As we mentioned earlier on those last four drives, only 13 total yards. And now they've moved out to the 30-yard line. There's Jalen Guyton, and he can't get on track, and he is tied up right at the line of scrimmage. There's our man, Lakel Bass. Another great success story here at UTSA, and what a career he's had. It really turned it up this year. Former walk-on and just, you know, everything you want in a football player, and just a great example for everybody that plays football here that you can kind of work your way into this thing by just – Hard work, and you got to be talented too, obviously. But man, he's just a player that week in and week out, we call his number three or four times. Darden shakes off some tackles, and then he is knocked down by Balin Baker. You remember what Pete Golding called the Kel Bass? Called him Heady Eddie. Just said he's a football player. Just such a tremendous football IQ, and loves the game more than a lot of people he's ever talked to. Just really good backside pursuit there by UTSA. Now North Texas has it, but they'll have another big third down coming up. We have played three quarters, and UTSA leads 20-16. to 16, Back with a fourth after this. Well, hello. A lot of waving there as we welcome you to the fourth quarter. Texas! North Texas fans are excited. Our team's got a pretty big fourth down or third down conversion coming up. They need the 40-yard line. Third and seven here for the Mean Green. After all that talk about the offense, only 82 total yards between both teams in the third quarter. Fine stands tall in the pocket and throws for the first down. And that's a big one. And who else? Jalen Guyton. Back to saying his name a lot more. Great route, great throw, but you cannot say enough about the guys up front for North Texas giving them a great throwing lane. UTSA looked like they were going to get a good push there, but the pocket held up perfectly. And they brought the pressure. And Guyton is a tough guy to stop on a slant, and they're moving the sticks. Looks like T.J. Henson really helped out. There's Jalen Darden got ripped down from behind. He's able to fall forward. And Eric Banks got an arm on his jersey to tackle him. Banks is another one that's had a great year for UTSA along that front four that they've got. Man, it's just... There's so many of these guys. Their front four is amazing. They rotate guys in and out. 
Those guys all do the job. Their linebacking core has been off the charts. They've really tightened this thing up. Both defenses have, actually. And off to Wilson. He's getting some space and takes a big hit and delivers one of his own as he goes out of bounds into the UTSA sideline. That's not a guy who we've said much in this second half. Jeffrey Wilson, who leads the conference in rushing yards per game at 133 yards per game. Only 12 carries and now just over 70 yards. But UTSA has really kept him in check tonight. Yeah, he's had a really long run that's helped his yards in this football game, but he came off a little gingerly there on that particular play after that hit. Nick Smith, the backup running back, is in, and he gets it into the middle, into open space. And Nate Gaines has to knock him down in the second line of defense. Yeah, so North Texas's first guy goes out. UTSA thinks, okay, they're not going to give it to the second guy, and that's two successive running plays in a row, and you thought with a high snap might throw the rhythm of the playoff a little bit, but indeed it did not. And now North Texas is marching here in the fourth quarter, down four. And all of a sudden, a game that has felt comfortably in favor for UTSA after that second and third quarter. Well, one touchdown for North Texas, and they grab the lead right back. And Fine's going to go for it. Deep down the right sideline, it's a touchdown for Jalen Guyton. Who else but those two to give North Texas the lead here to start the fourth quarter? I mean, this guy, wow. The separation that he gets, and then, you know, the coaches are telling us all week how Mason Fine is just super accurate. I mean, again, all Guyton has to do once he creates all the separation is stick his hands out. Now you can see why he was the conference player of the week. That's another long scoring march. Oh, miscommunication. And North Texas is going to try to throw for the conversion. It's intercepted. And they don't convert, convert the point after attempt. And they have now missed two point after attempts. That's going to potentially loom large here with a 22 to 20 ball game. Well, they always do when you're chasing those points, especially towards the end of the game. So really good job there by Mosley to finish off the rest of that play. But, man, you just don't get many opportunities to put points on the board. But as we take a look at another touchdown, another look at the touchdown, Mr. Guyton rising up in the fourth. Jalen Guyton, the reigning Conference USA Player of the Week after a 14 reception 211-yard performance in their last game and Southern Miss. Well, seven receptions, 176 yards, and two touchdowns. And he's put the mean green in front 22 to 20, but Chuck only 22 and not 23 because of a botch point after attempt. Well, that's the second one they've had in this football game where they haven't been able to convert. And it's like it was a high snap, and then the holder got it down, and then... Yeah, it looked, no, it's a funk fest after that. <laughs> looked like Moore was racing behind him because he thought it was going over his head. And then they got it down. So well, the miscommunication there. Yeah, and just looking at the game that number six Mason Fine has had is, is he going to ask for a foot massage? <laughs> Getting some retaping. I mean, this kid has taken some shots today and hung right in there. So is this guy, Dalton Sturm. This has been, this has been a lot of fun today. The big plays have defined this game. Five over 20 yards, including on those two touchdowns for Jalen Guyton for North Texas. Botch snap, and it goes to Jalen Rhodes anyway. He's able to fall forward for a gain of five. Well, good job up front of guys staying with their blocks, but even better job by Jalen Rhodes. I mean, at that point, it's a scramble drill, and you're just trying to find any kind of a crease or some daylight to try to not make that a negative play. Turn that into a really nice game. So now we'll see if UTSA's offense can match what North Texas just did. Still plenty of time in the fourth quarter, just about three minutes in. But North Texas has regained the lead. Rhodes wrapped up in the backfield. And that's Tillman Johnson making the tackle for the loss. Well, all fourth quarter action tonight on the Citywide Sports Network is presented by IHOP eat up every moment. 
I think that's what Tillman Johnson just did there. He ate up Jalen Rhodes in the backfield. Presents another third and long for UTSA. You know, Tillman Johnson and the rest of his buddies up front doing a much better job here in the second half, getting pressure in the backfield and just being more active. Now this stadium has come alive. North Texas beat UTSA two years ago when the teams played here. Their only win in this series. And whistles blow the play dead. Delay a game on UTSA. Now that's going to make a, a third and six infinitely more difficult. Pushing him back five yards. Might be a time to find number four, Marquez McNair. UTSA needs to make something happen right here. Obviously, these possessions in the fourth quarter are precious. Penalty is not going to help matters. Well, McNair does go into the slot down there at the bottom of the screen, along with Josh Stewart. And Sturm wasn't ready for the snap, and more whistles fly. That's a false start, and look at the mean green sideline. They are absolutely fired up. They look like Chuck McAtenick trying to dance to no music there. For a second. <laughs> Five yard penalty, still third down. Well, crowd noise, you'd have to say, is playing a part on these last two plays. It's really got messy on the UTSA side. Just trying to get the playoff. North Texas really hyped up this game. They wanted to get everyone out and make this place loud in a crucial West Division matchup. Sturm gives the handoff to Clay, who gets nowhere. That's Andy Flushy, a redshirt senior, a guy who has been through some of the lowest points of North Texas football and now on the upswing. And a big stop to give the ball back to his offense. Yeah, huge stop. And then not only that, you get UTSA off the field, and you should have pretty decent field position after you just went down and scored on another big play. Third three and out for UTSA, and it will give it right back. And North Texas, who has some momentum after that last touchdown. And here comes pressure. Almost blocked. Rootsis got knocked down, but no flag. And the punt's fielded cleanly by Jalen Darden. And Rootsis is slow to get up. And he'll run back to the sideline. I'd like to see that at some point. Wow. Uh, North Texas, a two-point lead. They're looking for more. Mason Fine will lead the offense back out onto the field. Green led 13 to nothing to start the game. They then trailed at halftime, 17 to 16, and now North Texas leads once again. And a reminder, this has been a tremendous game. If you want to watch it again, you can watch it tomorrow in a command performance replay at 10 a.m. on KCWX. Fine gives it to Wilson, who is stood up. And UTSA piles on to drive it back. Well, what's interesting, you know, we had the end of the third quarter, and both teams put their hands in the air with the four fingers up, signifying this is our time. We want to rise up and own this fourth quarter. Now we'll see who does it. I mean, that was an awful good start to the fourth quarter for North Texas after they hadn't really done a whole lot in a quarter and a half. But, boy, these big plays that they've come up with today have really saved their bacon. Jalen Guyton, always the big play threat. Fine was looking for him. Now has to run out of the pocket and flings it to the far sideline. That was almost hauled in by Rico Bussey Jr. Despite a lot of pressure from once again Marcus Davenport and the UTSA defensive line. And the North Texas sideline was really irritated after the end of that one. They wanted a unsportsmanlike call on the sideline, but man, these guys are just playing hard. Well, balls away. DB's trying to make a play over there. Jupy.
Yeah, a lot on the line. North Texas already played two conference games. UTSA 0-1. And, and just their second. A draw to Wilson, but Tauafa read it well. And after the initial surge, Wilson chopped short of the first down marker and short of the 45-yard line. Yeah, because that was going to be a really big play. And Tauafa was still getting blocked and still fought through his block and was able to snuff that out to show you what kind of player he is. You know, people don't remember, or maybe they do, <laughs> this guy was the leading freshman tackler in the entire nation a season ago and one of the top ten regardless of class. And how big was that? Alex Woodworth, you're right, he had Tau Effa blocked and Josiah still made the tackle. Now UTSA will get it back. Pending the Brady Jones fair catch, which he did make, although he had to run up a little bit to pull it in. Uh, UTSA, another chance to claw back into this one. 8.36 remaining in the game. The Roadrunners trail by two. They'll have the ball after this. Our Citywide Sports Network telecast calendar is brought to you by IHOP. Eat up every moment next Saturday night as UTSA hosts the Rice Owls at 6 p.m. on CW35 live from the Alamo Dome. Visit CitywideSportsNetwork.com for our complete schedule of exciting college football and basketball games. CSN, where it all begins. Yeah, we got UTSA and UTEP the week after, and then the Trinity Tigers going to get some TV time. I can't think of anything more exciting than this right now. 8.36 left, UTSA down, and Jalen Rhodes breaking free. But stopped just short of the first down marker by EJ Agia. You know, and as we watch this game unfold, you know, clearly the difference right now is explosive plays. North Texas is making them, and UTSA is not, although that's a great first run here on first down for Jalen Rhodes. Jalen Rhodes, UTSA could really use one of those big plays too. Rhodes had a big touchdown run at Texas State. A career high, 174 yards rushing that game. This time it's Clay who dives forward and has enough to move the sticks. Now you know Coach Selfo, UTSA's offensive coordinator, he's got a lot of experience managing games. He was with the Jacksonville Jaguars at one point, calling the offense for those guys. And this is one of those things, you know, you want to, if you can, go on one of those long drives and eat up some of this clock if you don't get one of those explosive plays. Handoff again to Clay, and he is upended in the backfield by Kyrie Muhammad. All right, now let's take a look at the top 25. The NCAA scores this evening are sponsored by MySA.com, the largest voice in South Texas for 150 years. And no surprise there, Alabama dominating as usual. Ohio State up big at Nebraska. But after a couple of top 25 upsets already last night, hey, nothing for granted here in the top 25. And USC is struggling at home, so it's going to be uh, quite a bit of turnover in the top 25 next week. Tyrell Clay again can't shake free. And the ball came loose. No, it was still Clay. He was just down, then got up, and it was thrown back again. The surge of momentum, but Liasi Tauralo kept chugging him back down. Yeah, I tried to trick him there with a run. After the run on first play didn't work. And just North Texas, their defense has really risen up and done the job here. Really forcing UTA, UTSA into a third and long again. That was the ninth tackle for loss by the Mean Green, and it forces a third and 17. Roadrunners need the 35-yard line. Sturm has to escape. He's going to take off himself. Dalton Sturm towards the first down marker, and he has a first down rush. Wow. Are you kidding me? Needed 17, got 19. Oh, he got a little twist there, forced him out of the pocket, and he just saw green in front of him. No pun intended, and I'm not so sure that last little roll that he did over the defender who was tackling him wasn't the impetus that gave him the first down. Just a great play all the way around by Dalton Sturm and UTSA. Boy, do they need that one. Clay tries to keep the offense moving. Eric Jenkins says, how about you stop right here? After a gain of four. 
And that's a, the uh, impressive thing about Dalton Sturm. As the quarterback, he's also their second leading rusher this season. He came into the game having rushed for 198 yards. And now he has close to 50 yards rushing tonight. All that while they've whittled down almost four minutes of this clock so far on this drive. Under five minutes. And a two-point deficit for the Roadrunners. Clay breaks the initial tackle, still charging forward across midfield and into Mean Green territory. And Joshua Wheeler had the initial attempt to get him in the backfield. And just, just whiffed. And Clay doing an amazing job to just run through the arm tackle and move the sticks again for UTSA and doing it all on the ground on this drive. Still charging forward, this time Jalen Rhodes. And yeah, the Roadrunners want to take as many seconds as possible off this clock. What's interesting though, Chuck, you kind of put yourself in a situation where this is a must-have everything drive because of all the time clicking off the clock right now. Well, you still got some timeouts left, but yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, you go right down the field, you milk the clock, you get your points, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, and go win a football game. Don't give Mason Fine any time left on the clock. Sturm the play action. Out of the pocket, back to Rhodes. He's got wide open space. Down the right sideline, Jalen Rhodes on his feet and into the end zone. Look at Dalton Stern down on the other side of the field. Doing some sort of shimmy on the ground. He liked that. The play action pays off again for UTSA. Jalen Rhodes goes 46 yards the end zone. And the Roadrunners are back out in front. Everybody thinks this thing's going left, and then Rhodes sneaks out to the right. Just a great cutback and great vision by Jalen Rhodes, who comes up big for the Roadrunners in the fourth quarter. No reason not to go for two here. And how about those missed point after attempts by North Texas? They have missed two. Right now it's 26, 22, could be 26, 24. They don't want to play the what if game, but now UTSA, yeah, trying to push ahead even further. Sturm steps up, throws high, and over the head of Marquez McNair. And the touchdown drive, but they can't convert the two point conversion. And it's a four-point lead for the Roadrunners. The waning minutes of this fourth quarter. We got a barn burner here. UTSA 26, North Texas 22. Heck of a finish coming up. Game on. 329 left in this ball game. And for those in San Antonio following the game, stay with us for the Thomas J. Henry post-game show. When you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7, nights and weekends, 210-656-1000. But before the post-game, I have a feeling we have a lot of action packed into the final three minutes and 29 seconds here at Apogee Stadium. And yeah, this has been everything we build it up to be. One team leading the division of Conference USA, the West, other team trying to get back in the race. It's been great. A short kick. There's Darden spun around, still on his feet. Jalen Darden reverses field, and Darden has some space before he's finally run around, thrown out of bounds, but a flag comes late. Now Jalen Darden staying on his feet. Might have just gotten his team an extra five and then 15 more yards. Well, that was Daryl Godfrey, the former O'Connor star in San Antonio. Personal foul, late hit, kicking team, number 23. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the return. First down. That's a tough one, but you know, you can see how these things happen. You got Darden, who breaks the first tackle, and then all of a sudden, you know, panic starts to set in. 
you got to get this guy on the ground. And Godfrey's trying to, you know, shuck his blocker and make a play. He may not even be aware where he's at on the field, but. Now, Devron Davis is trying costly. to hold him back as he crashed into him. And that is a, a costly one indeed after Andrew Martell had him wrapped up. Darden gets the extra yardage. And here's another Jalen. Guyton has nowhere to go as he is locked up by Carl Lost in the third. Yeah, big time play by Carl Austin because we've seen Guyton on that play several times tonight. And it's been a tough thing to stop. Such a talented player Guyton is. You know that this is not the last time that North Texas is going to seek him out with under three to go in this football game. 26 to 22. And those missed point after attempts loom large for North Texas right now. Over the middle, low ball, but hauled in. Jalen Guyton once again. I have a feeling Mason Fine's going to target Jalen Guyton a few more times in this draft. Yeah, he has all night, and for good reason. I mean, this guy, we've seen how special he is and how hard he is to contain and just speed to burn. You've got to try to keep him in front of you, which UTSA has done right there, but he still finds a way to get his. Third and two. North Texas does have all three of their timeouts. Of a completed catch is under review. They're going to look at that one. Challenges do come from the booth, so it's not like a coach had to call that challenge and there's something the replay official wants to look at. But while we wait for that, you know, 26 to 22, I'd like to remind you that tonight's second half scoreboard is sponsored by Homevestors. Need to sell your home quickly? Call Homevestors, the We Buy Ugly Houses people. 1 800 44 Buyer. And how big is this play? Now, as you see, Fine gets rid of the ball quickly. And hard to tell from that angle. Sure looked like a catch there. And hard to get a look there. Now, from what we see, yeah, Guyton has his arms under it. Although I think our, uh, our success rate on predicting these challenges is about 1 in 10. <laughs> it always is. It's like you always say, you take... A play on the field, which is a judgment call, and then you send it up to the booth for another judgment call. Now this one was a pretty quick review, though. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Third down. The rare occurrence where you hear the home crowd cheer for a third down. But a much shorter third down than if that had been incomplete. Absolutely. Because regardless, you have to believe that UNT is going to have two plays here to try to pick up the sticks. Now North Texas needs midfield. Fine takes it himself, trying to find space, and Mason Fine will find none of it. Josiah Tauafa again helped lead that charge, and C.J. Levine made sure Fine wasn't getting forward. Just a great job springing it out, stringing it out, I should say. And then guys just running to the football. Tawa Effa has just got amazing closing speed. and Fourth down coming for North Texas. And these teams want to talk it over. Not surprising. Perhaps the play of the game right here UTSA. with 93 You're seconds second left. Half. It will be 30 seconds. And that's the second time out for UTSA. Well, North Texas does have three timeouts. So if they don't convert, the game is not over. They could call their timeouts and potentially get the ball back. But it would be a crushing blow for the mean green. And you, you kind of sense that the game boils down to this play. Yeah, without a doubt, because you're right. They do have all three of their timeouts, but one first down essentially wins this football game for UTSA. Here's what's on the line, and those are the Conference USA standings. They're presented by MySA.com, the largest voice in South Texas for 150 years. UTSA has split their first two conference games in each of the last five years. Well, right now, they're 0-1. They have to win this to keep that going. And North Texas is off to its best conference start since 2004, and that was back in the Southland Conference, the Sunbelt Conference, rather playing football here for an awful long time. 
Oh, fine was ready to go. The officials weren't quite ready. All right, let's do it. North Texas, seven for 11 this year on fourth down conversions. Handoff, Wilson, he has no space, and Jeffrey Wilson is denied the first down. Kevin Strong made the tackle. C.J. Levine was in the backfield as well. And North Texas turns it over on downs with a minute 28 left. Well, those big guys up front, they do the job every single week, it seems like, for UTSA. And just all kinds of pressure on the run blitz, almost snuffing that thing out. North Texas going three wide over on the far side. Turns out it was just window dressing, and UTSA just completely jammed that play up from the get-go. Had multiple hats in the backfield. They are fired up on the visiting sideline. Reminiscent of the season opening win for UTSA. They stopped Baylor and then ran out the clock for one of the bigger wins in program history. Handoff goes to Rhodes, and he dives forward for a few yards. Well, now it's time to look at your CSN player of the game, presented by John Wayne Home Service Company. And who is it, Chuck? North Texas. Oh, uh, let me guess. It will be 30 seconds. Please put 124. You know, big man on defense. We, we talked about Marcus Davenport even at halftime, and you know, we've pretty much seen him every week this season. And as good as he's been, and he has been good, this was his all-timer today. I mean, he already had his coming out party many, many, many games ago. But the senior really just, I mean, he just looks like he's next level better than everybody else. Eight tackles, two and a half sacks, four tackles for loss, and a forced fumble for Marcus Davenport. There's a reason he was a first-team all-conference selection this season. You know, he's been healthy. For UTSA, yeah, way. healthy, putting up numbers. You know he demands constant attention and double teams, and yet none of that seems to matter. You talked about what a great athlete he was coming out of high school and being a basketball player at Stevens. I mean, he's just got all the intangibles that the next level guys love. A big charge forward by Jalen Rhodes. Looks like he's short of the first down marker, though. Tackle made by Colton McDonald. And now you can say the game comes down to this play. One timeout left for North Texas. And a third down and very short coming up for UTSA. So it's your best play here. I mean, yeah, you're going to be able to punt this thing down the field even if you don't pick up the sticks, but a chance to ice this game right here. So it's going to be really interesting to see what Coach Wilson and Frank Selfo, his offensive coordinator, come up with here because, yeah, you get the sticks here and this game is over. If you don't get it, you do just a little dive play and it gets jammed up, then Mason Fine's going to have another crack. And they've got weapons on the other side, as we've seen tonight, especially that Guyton kid. Mercy, he had a nice game tonight. So Third and three, officially your, your best play right here, your best, safest play, make it happen. Rhodes in the backfield. And off to Rhodes, he's tackled at the line and stopped short. Roderick Young got into the backfield, and now it's a very interesting decision for the Roadrunners. Yeah, there was a lot of movement. They tried to give him some different looks, but Roderick Young and company having none of it. Huge stop for North Texas there for the first three downs. And Rhodes didn't get anything, so still fourth and three. Chuck, well, we've seen UTSA go for it a couple of times tonight. They've been successful. Two for two on fourth downs tonight. Do you risk it right here? Well, going back to what I said earlier, I mean, conventional wisdom is you've taken the number one offense in this conference and held it to 22 points tonight. So I think looking at the scoreboard, your defense has done the job. Having said that, we know that Coach Wilson does not think conventionally sometimes. And he knows his squad better than we do. And it looks as though they are going to line up to punt this thing. It's interesting that Darden is back. North Texas brought the house last punt. It's a high short punt. And it takes an absolutely perfect UTSA bounce. Yanni Roots is doing his job. 
you know, the last punt that he had careened into the end zone, and I know he wasn't real thrilled about that, but, boy, you couldn't have asked for a better punt. Well, all right, Mason, fine. All you have to do is go 98 yards down the field <laughs> to win this game. No timeouts, 98 yards. Your team trails by four. Let's see if Mason Fine he has anything left or if Jalen Guyton has any more magic left well, and that's in the this thing. game. You, you've got to still, I think, you've got to bring some pressure because if you give Mason Fine time to throw, you're also giving Guyton time to run, and that's what would concern me the most. Here comes some pressure. Fine over the middle. And Michael Lawrence is dragged down at a short game. UTSA just slacking off. They're going to give him that, especially with no timeouts and the clock still ticking. No first down there. Well, I like that they were still bringing some heat. Here comes Tawa Effa. Fine to the sidelines. Rico Bussey Jr. with a reception. That stops the clock. And now North Texas has moved out of the shadow of its own end zone. UTSA will take that all day long. Keep everything in front of you and get some pressure on the quarterback and do not let number nine beat you deep. Yeah, still 80 yards to go for North Texas, trailing by four. Fine has to escape. He's going to throw it long down the sidelines and too high, out of bounds. That's the second time Rico Bussey Jr. has made a catch and a very good one only to be out of bounds and have it brought back. Well, again, UTSA doing a lot of different things schematically and giving Mason Fine a lot to look at. They looked like they were going to bring the pressure again that side and then drop very deep into coverage. So they're giving him some different looks right here, try to junk it up and make it as, most, as difficult as possible for him as he tries to navigate this offense down the field with only 41 ticks left. Jalen Guyton is at the top of the screen. He's been a menace all day for the UTSA defense. Fine, going to chuck it downfield. And it's caught. Caught by Lawrence. Austin Jupe had it. He did everything right, but time has jumped. He saw it. He tracked the ball. He just left his feet too soon. Clock stops, 32 seconds left, ball on the 31 for North Texas. Trying to pull off perhaps the biggest win in the young Seth Luttrell era. And a timeout by UTSA. They kind of calm everyone down over there. Well, that now you got to change your defense too. Now the goal is still the same. You got to keep them out of the end zone. But look, Austin Jupe is right there. He just. He just left what, his feet a switch too soon. Was it a little push? Kind of looks like there might have been a little sly receiver move those good receivers do, but you're right, Absolutely. the timing for Jupe just underneath that ball. Yeah, that's what the best receivers do. They find a way to get some separation, and they do it any way they can. Now this matchup's lived up to everything we expected. Absolutely, and then so. You said something about last team having the ball might win this thing, but both of these defenses have played reasonably well too, considering the skill level that they're facing from the opposing offense. North Texas needed a game-winning field goal on September 23rd here against UAB. That was their last home game. And they conjure up some more magic. Fine downfield. Hauled in, but short of the first down marker, so the clock's still going. And now it's under 20 seconds left. Fine spikes it. And I'm not sure if North Texas knew right away that they didn't get the first down, but then they scrambled to the line of scrimmage to spike that ball. Now 17 seconds left and third down. Trailing by four. <laughs> Man, this has been some kind of game. Win, lose, or draw. We know we're not going to see a draw with a four-point difference on the scoreboard, though. Here comes pressure. Fine got hit, throws it in, it's caught. Bussey Jr. has space to the 10-yard line, and he's going to take it into the end zone. North Texas scores with 10 seconds left to take the lead.
Amazing. But Mason Fine is in a lot of pain. He might have just sacrificed his body for the biggest win in Seth Luttrell's young tenure. CJ Levine got a wicked shot on him, and then once the ball got free and the receiver was running clean, you knew it was going to be awfully hard for UTSA to make this stop. One crack right there. Devron Davis can't make it happen. And here's the shot from C.J. Levine. Just a smidge too late, and just a player making a play by Mason Fine. Unbelievable football game. And Frank Wilson is on the field in the ear of a couple of officials. Now, Bussy did tiptoe down the sidelines. Maybe he wanted to look at that one. And a broken down play, and Mason Fine makes it happen. And Rico Bussy skirts through the traffic. Kick is up and good. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Mason Fine tonight, 20 for 34, 354 yards and three touchdowns. And he just marched his team 98 yards down the field in 57 seconds with no timeouts. And again, big plays. It's what cost UTSA against Southern Miss. And it has been a huge bugaboo today. I mean, for the most part, they've done a great job considering how talented and multifaceted this offense is. But there's just been too many huge explosion plays that, to this point, have been hard to overcome. But that's some kind of drive, man. That's one for the books. If North Texas holds on, that is indeed one for the books. They'd be 3-0 in Conference USA and 4-2 and on the season with wins over Southern Miss and UTSA already. But Brett Winnegan nearly broke one earlier. And he is at the four-yard line. Ten seconds left. North Texas leads by three. Kicks it back to him, but Winnegan lets it go out of the end zone. Now UTSA is also out of timeouts. So it's going to be very difficult to try to get something down and set up a field goal. Well, you know, you got the safe pass on a dig, and then it's going to probably be hook and ladder central. Might be able to run one play where you could you know, do a quick out, maybe get yourself a little closer. And I don't know if they've got anybody in the ballpark that can throw a Hail Mary from 70 yards. You always have, you're right, interesting end of game scenarios. When you're back all the way at your own 25, a few laterals, we'll see what UTSA can do. Sturm taking a lot of time, he flings over to Stewart. Who gets rid of it, tosses it back, it's on the ground. McNair comes up with it, he flings it over, and this one is still bouncing around. A flag comes out, and UTSA is still running with it. Now ball's on the turf, and it is down, and North Texas is going to come up with the win. They're keeping the sideline back just in case that flag was on the mean green, which would keep the game going. Illegal forward pass, number four, return team. Well, the official just said game's not over, although everyone on the North Texas sideline thinks it is. They have sprinted onto the field in the mean green. Pull off a 29 to 26 win. They led early. They had a rally back from a halftime deficit. 
And North Texas now 3-0 in conference. And a huge, huge win to knock off UTSA. The Mean Green now 4-2 on the season. Great football game. Instant classic, right? Absolutely. And worth watching the replay tomorrow morning. I know it's tough for UTSA. That's the second back-breaking loss in a row that they've had where you just don't quite have enough at the end. And what a ball game. I mean, I'm just I'm at a loss for words. All right, now Gary standing down with the winning coach, Seth Luttrell. Coach Luttrell, can you just sum up what we just saw here tonight? Well, it's just uh, credit to our kids, man. They, they fight all the way to the end. Uh, they made some big plays down there to, to get us in position to where we had an opportunity to win the game. But it wasn't pretty, but I was really excited about how hard and we stuck together, overcame adversity as a team, and it's, it's, a, it's a total team credit win. Your quarterback, that guy is tough. He took some monster shots tonight, and he kept getting up, albeit sometimes limping, but obviously he led this team down here for a winning drive. What can you say about your quarterback well, tonight? He's, he's phenomenal. UTSA has a really good defense uh, and a really good overall team, and uh, you got to give them a lot of credit, but uh, Mason's a fighter. Uh, he's, he's, he's tough. Uh, the guys around him believe in him, and uh, he's a special player. Coach, I know you were mentioning you guys had a couple individual goals, some tears. You want to stay unscathed at home you're able to do that tonight and you said this used TSA team was going to be the toughest competition you saw tonight is that exactly what you predicted well yeah and we knew they're a great football team uh, there's a lot of great football teams in, in conference USA well I do I truly believe this conference can play with anybody and uh, from top to bottom week in and week out you're going to have great opponents and it's going to be every week's going to be a challenge coach congratulations on the Appreciate win thank it. you for thank the time you very much God right. bless thank you. Well, a big win there for North Texas. And I think we might have one more interview down there on the field. Let's go, let's go down there to Gary, back on the field. Here with Jalen Guy. And Jalen, you had yourself quite the game, two scores. Sum up what we just saw here tonight. You try to say that again? Sum up what we just saw here tonight. <laughs> oh, oh. Obviously, you guys yeah, yeah, had yeah. a battle back. Listen, sum it up. You saw UNC coming to the game, coming to a fight, duke it out with a really good team, and come out with a dub. Listen, you guys went in at halftime, and you don't really trail very often this season. Your head coach said, listen, we're going to be fine. We're not going to deviate from that game plan. Obviously, you and Mason were a big part of that game plan. Sum up what you saw from your quarterback. Just just heart, man. Bro. We, we come out here and we fight. Like I said, it was like a boxing match. We were just exchanging blows with a good team, man. It's worked all through the week, all through the summer. He came out here, he put his heart on the line. Each and every one of us did. Jalen, you're still fired up, man. It, it looks like yeah. you could probably play another couple uh, quarters. I, I could go, man. I could go a couple more games, bro. Your coach said that you guys have a couple individual goals. One, stay undefeated at home, yeah. and two, take care of business tonight against UTSA, which he said yeah. was going to be the toughest team you guys played this season. Yeah. So far, about halfway through, was he right? I mean, so far, yeah. We just try to take, we just try to take each opponent one step at a time. Uh, you know, our overall mission is, like he says, to go undefeated. But what, how we look at it is going 1-0. Every week, you know what I mean? Going one and zero every single day, every single week, and and uh, and we gonna we gonna come out on top that way. Jalen, last question for you: How do you top tonight's performance uh, next week? Here, you had work. two scores and a bunch of work. yards. Work, work, work. We gonna go back. We gonna start. We gonna we got practice Sunday. I got work tomorrow. All right, Jalen. Jalen, going back to work. Congratulations yes, on the night and the win. All right, I gotta throw it back up to you guys because Jalen's gonna hit the weight room or something or go play some more football. This guy is hyped. Uh, thank you, Gary. Appreciate all the work down there on the field. And Jalen Guyton certainly won to dominate tonight, 182 yards, two touchdowns. Well, tonight's CSN telecast, the Mean Green Football, is a Learfield presentation with Quarter Moon Productions. For those that have been watching on CW33 Dallas, good night from Apogee Stadium in Denton for the final score. North Texas 29, UTSA 26. For those of us in San Antonio, stay with us for the Thomas J. Henry postgame show. Well, a terrific ball game here tonight. And North Texas comes out with the 29 to 26 win. Chuck, can, can we kind of just sum up what we just saw here? A tremendous ball game between two of the best teams in the West Division. Well, it was interesting the way this thing started. You know, you have the first quarter where North Texas is just running all the way up and down the field. And then UTSA kind of settles in. They get on a little scoring run there where they converted a few of their drives into points. And then, you know, it looks like UTSA is going to take control in the third quarter and then all of a sudden, North Texas bounces back with some great defense. They get some help from UTSA's offense when it kind of sputtered a little bit. But 
just an amazing football game start to finish. And, you know, it's interesting. We hype these games every week, and sometimes you can tell the games that are going to be better than others, obviously. But I don't know that we would have predicted this good a football game start to finish. Well, tonight's play of the game is presented by Homevestors. You need to sell your home quickly? Call Homevestors, the We Buy Ugly Houses people, 1 800 44 Buyer. No surprise, the play of the game tonight. Uh, it's just a tough play when you don't get home and you're bringing the house, and then the receiver is running free like that, and then the defenders have to stop. They don't have a head start in terms of trying to catch him, and then, you know, Mason Fine just hanging in there to the last possible second until his guy flew open, and it's just a back-breaking play for UTSA and obviously a home run hit for North Texas catching UTSA because they were able to get the ball away free, but just too many big plays given up by UTSA tonight, and that's what ultimately did them in. Well, it's a win for North Texas, and more of the Thomas J. Henry postgame show comes up after this.